two to be alive. Yes, sir. Isn't that right? I appreciate it. I put a call out for Yehudi. Isn't that right? I told you when you Yehudi, you're the love of a man booting. Isn't that right? You got to be Yehudi. Isn't that right? Yehudi the only way. Isn't that right? Celebrate. That's what we come to do. Isn't that right? Ain't no stopping us. Now we got him. That's how it says. Speak it in yourself. Uh, Shireen, song, and Ruachne, Shireen. Make it melody in your love to Yahuwah. Isn't that right? That's what the book said. That's all we're doing, what the man told him. And all right, we got rid of them church hymns. Yeah. Tell me a charge to keep it. You need to pay it off. Yeah, right. Everybody know you keep charging, you don't get debt. Yeah, right. need to pay something off in that right. In that right, I'll pay your debt. Yes, sir. And I'll pay your fare. Yes, in that right, we're doing that thing like the man told us to do it. In that right, I appreciate Mr. Hua for sparing us another yum to the Layla. I mean, from the Layla to the yum. Uh, he did keep us, too, from a yum to the Layla. And now we went from Layla to yum again. One more again. One more again to consider to get it right. Appreciate all my people, everybody, those listening, pressing, those still recovering. We miss y'all. Y'all hanging now. You know right? Don't faint. Don't quit. Time come out of the wild. He'll let you learn to appreciate these little times and things you think a little bit out. Like. Just get up and just go when you want to. And that man comes and put an affliction on you. That affliction comes. Now you have to consider. I saw somebody put something in the, in the thread that morning. Well, it was a lot of stuff. I was throwing that and said, read. I was like, God damn it. I thought I read the whole book. Somebody said, who put that in there? Oh, anonymous. I was just now I was looking at it. Somebody put a bunch of stuff. It was just time I guess exposing a lot of stuff to doing with it. So did y'all not read it? Y'all didn't say it? Nobody said it for real? I can tell you, we know you ain't said it. We can't. <laughs> I can tell you still trying to know how to work the camera on their phone. Ain't it right? Now, so who else seen it? There's a bunch of stuff they kept saying, read. Y'all didn't see that? For real? I could have been on the person. It kept, it just had a... So I was the only one that got caught up. It said read. I thought it was talking about who? In the main thread. Yeah. I don't know who put it in. That was a long, it was a lot of stuff. It was just talking about a lot of different things were going on. That's amazing. I'm the only sucker read it, huh? I'm not only sucker. It was, it was interesting. It had a lot of different stuff. Guess somebody called itself exposing the system on a lot of ends. They had JFK and um, one of the clips had JFK and, um, and um, what's the other guy? Lyndon Johnson, both of them speaking. Oh, and you ought to see it. And JFK would tell them how they need to be able to control the weather. Oh, you want to look? Oh, it's, it's a real film. You ought to see it. He would tell them about how they need to be able to control the weather. And uh, Lyndon Johnson came on next and he talked. Because, you know, he told them that they need to be able to control the weather. He said, he that controls the weather rules the world. He said, we need to control the weather. They, I told you, I said, y'all look at a thing before we put it down. When the Senate brought in um, some people from... Um, I guess the NSA and them, they were asking him about them. Was it true they had a machine that could control the weather? He said, yeah, we do. He said, they've been able to do that since back in the 60s. See, a lot of the time, you look at these disasters coming, you know, it's all still in the hands of Yahuwah because Yahuwah getting the ability to do it. Right. It's the fact that you're dealing with people that say, hey, folks, the people don't even realize these catastrophes that are coming up are fears that make you give up your rights. Yeah. See, when you, right. this is what you look at, just like the people in Lebanon, the people in uh, Syria, the people that are now going to be Turkey, Turkey, the same thing going to happen here eventually. They just, see, everywhere else is makeshift. They're just trying to see what's the behavior of the people when you do it. See, when the people can't eat and the people don't have anywhere to stay and the people are devastated by sickness and disease, the people are going to turn to their government. You're supposed to turn to your Yahuwah. Yeah. See, the government is not my Yahuwah. <clears throat> see, people like me, they'll label me as, um, I guess, against the system. I'm against the system to the to the effect of we need to establish a system that allows every man, every woman, every boy, and every girl an equal opportunity. Right. You know what I'm saying? Your trust, your religion, that's your business. I've been with you. That's your business. I'm not <clears throat> I'm not the person, or uh, I wouldn't be the person to make somebody take on the religion. So, you know, there are people that would. If you don't like Islam, will put Sharia law, and you know, <laughs> pretty much you're against Sharia law, then they're gonna kill you. This is not our home. It's not our place to enforce it upon somebody else. In our home and our house, we can enforce our religion and our rules. But the thing that I appreciate by Mr. Yahuwah, <clears throat> I took this by choice. I think that every man, every woman, every boy, and every girl should have the same opportunity. When it comes down to something for your betterment, your welfare, for your salvation, that needs to be something you need to choose for yourself. 
You can get a person to do something in a crisis or in a situation, but how dedicated are they to it if that's not really how they feel? I'm only here and I'm here because this is how I really feel. It ain't because I felt like this before COVID. Uh, <clears throat> I felt like this before 9-11. You know, at, at those weren't the situation that turned me. It was the storms. It was the bombing that was going on inside my life that made me make a change. And I decided to make a choice for myself. And I wouldn't think it would be fair to come along now and say, since I had an opportunity to make a choice to stay out or come in, I don't think it would be fair for me to come along and enforce upon another person to say, you don't come in, then you should die and I should kill you. That's your choice. When it comes out of your soul, you have to consider how valuable are you? You can look at the exterior structure. Um, it's going to fade and fall away. I used to have a head full of hair and all black hair, one of gray inside. But time just show you, you put out, I put a lot into myself. It didn't profit nothing because eventually it all fade away. He told her before, he said, all the glory of man is as a fading flower. Anybody, any women, y'all ever received flowers before? Aren't they beautiful when you get them? How long do they last? You know what they tell you? That's the glory of man. So how much can you put in the flower? You can go get them. You ever put them in a beautiful vase, a vase, and water them and put the other little stuff in there with it that come with the flower to keep them? How long do they last? He said, that's the glory of man. And all your beauty and all your height you're going to still fall away and fade away. You can do all the exercise and all the putting on, all the dying and marking you want to do. All your glory is going to fade away. And now we have to start looking at Yahuwah, somebody, the existing one, who glory don't fade, who years remain the same. That's why I serve him. What you going to do? The man still remain the same. He hadn't changed. He hadn't moved over. He felt a certain type of way about something now. He said, I felt this way the whole time. The whole time, he said, I've been consistent. If it been any inconsistency, it's been us. Sure. If there been any changes, it's been us. People say, well, I've been in this way for 40 years or 50 or 60 years. He said, when I started, I was in the way, and I won't ever get out of it. He the existing one. Y'all got it? I appreciate the fact of his existence and what he allows us to know about him because it gives us a depth of comprehension and gives us a, a, a mindset to sit down and consider how we have to adjust ourselves and how we have to be willing to be um, more, um, I guess, more dedicated to what it is that we're doing without being moved. Very few people can do that. Situations, circumstances, financial issues, it can all come and it can damper and it can make a change of how you feel about them, how you serve them. You know, regardless of what we've done, he never changed how he felt about us. He's hated actions that we've done but he still loved us. And the proven, he gave his only begotten. All he had. He didn't have any of them. He's just the only one. This one that came from me. Y'all got it? Set him forth just for you and I, just to show you how much you care about it. Sometimes you can feel like nobody care about you. I'll be honest with you. You would be lying to yourself. Every one of us, we've lied to ourselves to feel like we're all alone and nobody that cares. You think about it. You've been the one separated from him. He done told us, you know, with open arms. He's been sitting, waiting on us to return back to him. Isn't it? He even told us in the book of Jeremiah, he said, though you played the harlot with many lovers, he said, return to me, so I'll take you back. You know, he said, you know what was written? He said that if a man had given his wife a bill of divorcement and if she left him, he said that she had gone to somebody else, he said after that, she couldn't come back. He said, though you did it with many lovers, he said, yet return to me and I'll take you back. You know, he looked at, he's kind of like Smokey Robinson. You know what Smokey Robinson said? I don't care what they say about me. And he don't care. He said, I don't care what they do. All he cared about was being with us. That's all he cared. He said, I don't care what they say. He said, that's what they say. That if a man wife leave him and he get her bill of divorce, man, and she put it on, if she went and went with another man, the tourist said she could not return. He said, after that, she couldn't come back. She defiled. He said, return him and I'll take you back. He said, I ain't going to tell no life, try to play hard nigga like these guys I am. I'll never take you back. You'll forget it. He said, if you come, I'll take you back. That was for me. What you do when us a writer and already say you can't come back? See, a lot of times what we do, really, it, it's it based about how people look at us. And how people, it is, how people feel about us. It's not the truth. He said, he said it wouldn't be the truth. He said, I would be a liar if I said I didn't want you back. I'll be a liar. He said, I'll take you back. 
I don't care about that. I'll take you back. His love has always been, his heart has always been consistent for We've been inconsistent. Because we'll have a hang-up about some. Some will make us mad. Some we don't like. Some ain't work out. He said, I've been consistent the whole time. He said, I've been the same way. It just, if you look and see, it been your way that been unequal. He said, my way been equal. He said, everything I've done. He said, if a man turned for what he done and he been doing right, he said, I forget everything he done. He said, now, if a man turn away from everything he doing wrong and do what's right, he said, I forget everything he done. He said, you judging yourself. Aren't my ways equal? Aren't your ways unequal? You know what you say? Don't make no devil you repent. I'll never forgive you. He said, not me. If you'll stop doing it, he said, I'll forget about it. That's if you're doing wrong, I'll forget about it. And if you're doing right and you stop doing it, I will forget about it. He said, you judging yourself. He said, my way, they all don't think that fair. You, but you know what we look at? If it's me, if I turn now. I said, man, I put all this time in. You'll just let that go. He said, once you stopped it, I forgot about it. He said, but I'm the same guy. Once you stop doing wrong, forget about it. That would the mafia tell I forget about it. He said, forget it. You're trying to explain it. He said, forget about it. Don't even worry about it. I forgot it. I put it away. Tell me that ain't fair. How many times you messed up? It might be people who messed up in their marriage or in a relationship. And you know how hard you have to work to try to make that up. If you said something offensive, you did something. Anybody been in a situation or something like that? And you have to work so hard to try to figure. And that's always right here. Anything remotely you do, where is that? We know what he's saying. Forget about it. Forget about it. No, I, I just want to say again, he said, forget about it. I already forgot about that. That's how fair he is. It will seem like it's not right when it's you and you turning from what you're doing was right. But when you turn from what you're doing wrong, he said, forget about it. Tell me that ain't fair. See, you don't want the part that puts you to where you got to start over. But what about the part where he come in he said, I forgive you for that. We can move forward. It never happened. You got to appreciate a man like that. You got to appreciate a man like that. Otherwise, you, you know, how it, it's people who have given up in relationship. They just feel like I can't keep fighting that omen. You know what I'm saying? That you keep holding on my head. But some people will hold over your head and piss you down so much the way you just, you'll never get past. You just say, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and go. See, I knew you it ain't. I can't win. I'm never going to get past it with you. I'm never going to grow. We're never going to get to a place to where we can be new. So I'm just going to stop it. With him, he said, forget about it. He said, I'll never come. He said, I'll catch that in the sea of forgiveness. I'll put that thing away. You don't never have to worry about it again. That's why it's important to sit down and consider. Listen, life struggles will make you question a lot of things. It'll make you look at things and just look like, but why? But why? And there's no answer because there's so many things going on. To get an answer to one thing still leave so many other things unopened and unanswered. Then you just have to sit down and just consider yourself and your relationship with your creator. You do. I, I encourage every man, every woman, every boy and every girl, search and see for yourself. I don't want to just grab something because everybody got something. You know what I'm saying? I want to get something because it's right. That's it. I, I just want to get something that, you know, that's right for us. You know what I'm saying? It's right for me. Whether other people see it that way or not, you got to see it for yourself. You know, for years I wonder, you know, why people get in any of these religions or these other religions. Don't they know? And then sometimes you ask yourself, some people don't want to know. How many of y'all had imaginary friends? Anybody had? I mean, at any time. Now, don't try to play like you ain't crazy, nigga. Everybody had one. You, so let me get this straight. Let me see the folk. Don't put your hands up now. Where's the who put, put our hands up? We the only crazy folks in here. Rest of these folks ain't never had no imaginary friend in their life. Hey, yo, I mean, because you wanted something, and that's something you put up for yourself. It wasn't that you talked with anybody. It's just something for yourself, a comfort or whatever it was, so you weren't by yourself. You know what I'm saying, Pete? Sandy, you had one? Sandy said, not me. She said, I had any kids all my life. <laughs> she said, I ain't got no room for no imaginary friend. She said, she, Daddy said, she better not get none of the grocery bill to go up. Well, you shouldn't have to feed them. You know what I'm saying? That's the good thing about them. You can put them away when you get ready. You ain't got to give them baths or nothing to buy them to eat. But, but with that, because people, people tend to need something there, something that kind of works with them that's not a critic of them. You know what I'm saying? 
something that kind of um, can kind of coexist with them. And, and, and that's the thing that people are do because that's why people pick these religions. It gives them something, you know what I'm saying? But for me, I look at it because it establishes me. You know what I'm saying? I don't need an imaginary friend again. I don't need that, what I had when I was a kid or whatever the other things, these alter egos or whatever people might create or do for themselves. It's the fact of having a creator that exists. You know what I'm saying? He exists through what he says. You know, he gives the vitality to the word. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and makes it what it is that I can hold to it. It's the fact that what he stated, I can see it come to pass. I can see things unfolding the way that he subscribed it to us, that it would happen. You know what I'm saying? That it makes you come back to consider the things you see. Um, I, I remember years ago um, reading um, Romans 1 and about, I think it's 19. Might be 18. We talked about the invisible things that Elohim are clearly saying. I'll be honest with you, I, I moved right, and then it said God. I just, I just actually moved right past it. Because I don't know, in, in, in all honesty, just as a man thinking, if something's invisible, how do you see it? So that in itself was kind of wrapped up in a enigma. I don't, I, but I was told, you don't question God. It's just things he don't want us to know. And that's just what it is. And I'm hearing, and it said, the invisible things of God are clearly seen. I'm trying to figure. The invisible, invisible through me. Because if it's invisible, it's not seen, correct? So when you say it's clearly seen, that's kind of throwing in a sense. But then it's because of what my intelligence level was and what I knew about him. See, until you start looking at, through his craftsmanship is how you see him. Hmm? Let me tell you something. Just like, y'all ever seen Michelangelo? Picasso. Hold on. We're going to do something different today. Okay? We're going to play a game. Everybody do like this right in front of me. When you see me do like this to you and I'm looking at you, I want you to read my mind what I want you to do. Huh? That long time? Get two of them up there. I said, said, who put that up there? That was some interesting information, though. It really was. I still in that chat. I just talked to that man now. I said, you want me to keep your name off that boy? I can't really say. Can I? I said, so you're going to come in here with trouble. But no, but with the, um, but he wanted us to, like Picasso and Michelangelo, these different people. You know how people know them today? Who know? You know, if people can look at that and say, that's a Rembrandt. But the people who would do that, do they know Rembrandt? Have they actually seen Michelangelo? Picasso. And they can look and say, that's a Picasso. You say, how do you know that's a Picasso Rembrandt? They said, see, you can tell by the way he styles, by the way he paints. It's certain, see, it's certain strokes they put in their painting. That's what they'll get people they'll call experts. They'll come in, they can identify a fake from a real. He said, how you can do that? It's people like, have any of y'all ever met Abraham Lincoln? Seen him in person? But guess what? It's people who can look at his writing and pick up and tell you, say, that's, his, that's authentic. Because they pick up things on his stroke. They'll pick up a, an expert handwriter. They'll pick up things it's like certain people that are copy. They'll copy, but they'll miss certain little pieces that somebody said, that's not his stroke. You say, that's, that's crazy. How, how could you identify with him not him having some original works that he's done and comparing some original writings? You can say, this is consistent with the behavior of his writing or behavior of his painting. Y'all understand that? If some people can pick up um, Beethoven over some other art because they could pick up certain tunes or the way they play. You know what I'm saying? You'll play, you say, somebody else here, they say, you play just like Beethoven. There's somebody who, who's an expert that can pick up key sounds. They'll say, it's not. You don't. You can fool the other people. You can't fool them because they know the original. They pick up, see, even though they're hitting keys, it's certain things they might do, how they might linger a key. And somebody who's, whose ear that's acute to the sound that understands them can pick that up. So, I need you to understand this. The invisible things of Elohim. Now you got it. Now you got it. I pick him up on a stroke. 
I could pick him up on the sound. You know, he told us about um, stand ye in the ways, the rock, Dara King. What did he told to do? See, and what did he want you to do? As for the old ancient, where is the who? And when you find it, a lot there, and then you should find, you know, find the rest. Find the rest, shalom, the prosperity, the health, the peace. And he said, also, I set over them watchmen. What were they saying now? Their ear was acute. They could hear the sound. See, when you're a person that actually um, become familiar with him, you start to look at different things when people try to style it to see is it actually conducive to his work. Certain sounds are different things they tell you start looking at. Is that actually conducive to their work? Because he realized, you just tell me, go, I need somebody I need to be able to listen to. Oh, I'm looking and I'm seeing and I'm asking questions. I'm looking for an answer. He said, start listening to certain sounds. I need you to listen to them. All right? These are cadence that's given. In the military, they used the trumpet. They used to use I don't know if they do it anymore. They would use the trumpet to get them up and different things. And those guys knew exactly what it meant. They used to put one to put them to sleep. Oh, 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 oh. They knew that it was time to be done. They know they know time to jump up and get ready to start running out there with no gun. You're like, them, you're, you're not acute. They train you for certain things. You knew certain sounds. And then it's the same thing that you who will start letting know. We start listening to certain sounds. Like here, uh, my thundering ground with broken bar, thundering sound. Pick up, I had to pick up the piece. Paired on opportunity, would have kept me. So, you know what I'm saying? But it is. But that sound. You see what I'm saying? It's the sound. And that's what he wanted to do. He said, I need you to, I need you to listen. I need you to stop and listen to the sound of it because it's a distinction in it. Some people jump up and they do it. You're like, no, that's not, that's not what it's saying. It's not calling for that. And see, just like my um, different artists and different people in here, certain sound make a difference with, with what lyrics you're going to say. Right. You can't put hardcore rapping on Lanita Baker, Sweet Love. You be looking trying to say, that is crazy. We killing them niggas, sweet. You know what I'm saying? You know, just saying. <laughs> that's getting like that's crazy. That don't go together at all. See, it, it strikes you and puts you off. And his end is to get us to try to consider. So we're in a real good position for the fact that we had the opportunity to sit down to consider. That, that's really important. People, you, you might not realize it. You'd be surprised how many quick decisions people had to make. I'm talking about right now, quick, right now. You ain't really got a whole lot of thinking. And then later, you know how many times people go back and say, if I had an opportunity to read it, I could have caught that. If I had an opportunity to sit down and think, right now, make it right now. Come on, it's right now. It's right now, now nothing. What that put you, how much time you got with now nothing? I don't want to lose out, so I grab him. Later on, you realize, you said, I should have chosen nothing. Well, he giving her that opportunity, Jeff, for him. Dave, we know that Jujuba Rudy bitch was going to fail, Dave. When you come back, Dave, we're going to need that check on that boy, Dave. Dave, you been healthy today. Let me tell you, Dave, you know how many folks been waiting on you to fall day? Dave, Dave, just stick your head in the door, Dave. Listen. Y'all tell look. How many of y'all been waiting on day to fall? How many of y'all been, uh, how many y'all been waiting on day for that, that help to fall down one time? I know it. I'm with you, Dave. You know it. I know. You man, you gotta tell him. I know that. Y'all niggas be hating on Dave. We gonna still need that check when you come back, Dave. But no, nah, that's right. Well, nah, we 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 appreciate Mr. Hood. That I said, give her the opportunity to get it right. That's all. I just want to get it right. Don't want to get it wrong. You know. And I and I, I I rehearse and go over it. And you know, the biggest I think the biggest hurdle. You know. And I appreciate how he, how he allows you to adjust the chain. Because I'll be honest with you, I didn't know everything that was entailed on what you got to do. And had I known all of this, I wouldn't have came. I wouldn't have came. Because it, it's too much. Everybody here, I, the truth be told, I didn't know everything I had to do. And those people would have knew before they left out Mizraim that they were going to have all this. Them, them people wouldn't have left. They ain't common sense. When you come out, had he told them when you come out, Later, I'm going to slay over half of y'all. You be like, I'm going to stay here and keep working. Ain't that right? Man, y'all go ahead, man. Be safe. I ain't going nowhere. I'm not, because pretty much y'all, pretty much people know who they are. 
<laughs> it was like, I already know I'm going to get killed. I'm not going out there. He had to lead them people out and get them enough. And as they would grow, I can adjust and give you more. He could have gave them, he'd have gave them that tour while they were sitting inside Mizraim. They wouldn't allow. They wouldn't allow. They just, it was safer to stay there. Man, them folks heard that man talking and they started removing. They feared they were going to die. They was in Mizraim dying. They're like, at least this is a slower death. I just take my chances. That's what people do now. So it got to be introduced to a person, and as you grow, your understanding begins. to. Like I told you, the invisible thing, invisible through me. There was no reason for me to try to figure out, how do you see something? Y'all remember seeing the movie Invisible Man? What did he have to do for you to see him? Put on a hat, wrap himself up into something. Remember that? He would have to do that then, put, on, put a coat on. Then he'll take the coat and take it. Now he's going to be invisible. He's like, I don't know where he at. Unless he moves something or close something or open something. He said, that's me. I wrap myself up in Yahushua. Hello? Yeah. That's what he did. So you can see him. We need to see him. Your book had told us, he said, Allahim is with us. He told us, he said, that's what Emmanuel, he said, Allahim is with us. That's what his name was. He was with us. So he had to do that. And I appreciate the fact that he allows things to go on. The thing we watch and we see, he said, that's the only way you understand it. Although it's a television show, how else would you going to understand that? How would you have understood the invisible things of Allahim are clearly seen? I, that's, I mean, I, I just, I just went. People said, "Well, I would have figured." Of course, you would have figured out right to your destruction. We had to understand to start looking at his work. You know what I'm saying? His work, like particularly when great artists paint, you don't believe it. They signature their stuff. Did y'all know that? Allahim is signature did. That's why he gave you the Ruach Hakadosh. That's his seal on it. You know what people know when they see you? That's some Allahim work. That's Yahuwah's word. He signatures it. Hello? We all all right? Yes, that's his seal. That's how people going to know whether that's his word. Y'all got it. So you can see the works of the flesh, and you see the works of the Ruach. That's what Galatians told you about, right? So he has a signature that says, this is my word. Just like Yahushua. That's how we knew it was his word. After he moved, what did they say? The centurion. Yeah. The, the, this is his signature. This is his word. They had to see it play all the way out. I've seen artists, and when you start drawing your rigid saw, how they might start it. So you look, you're saying, I don't know where they're going with this. Until they finish, you say, wow. That's what happened with Yahushua. Think about it. He just came here as a baby. I'm going to look at him and just know it then. Let me just keep watching to see how you work. Let me just keep seeing how things play out. Later on, I'll recognize it. You'll see whether or not this is penmanship. Y'all got it. So we go through a lot of different versions sometimes and look, it might kind of like it throw you. It's really not. It's just trying to get down to the, um, well, I guess kind of like with the lowest common denominator. We're just trying to get down to the most simplistic part of knowing exactly how we're supposed to halal. Because, you know, everybody got a different way they view things. And it's it's going to be because of culture. It's going to be because of education level. It's going to be because of logic with people. But see, if you start dealing with logic, you got to look at how does what's Elohim's logic? You got your logic. I don't want to use my logic. I want to see what's his logic. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? What conditions play a part to you getting what it is he told you to get? Versus, to me, it would seem as though none of those are uh, predicated on your salvation. To me, it seems. And I wouldn't give it to you. It'd be detrimental to your health. So to come down to our salvation, we have to do a lot of work. It's a lot of work because you're trying to you're trying to get to Elohim that has a simplistic way, but people don't complicate it the way. And because they complicate the way, it ain't as easy as it seems. Y'all got it? And it, it? Look at how much stuff we, can, we got now. People, people today possess more than their parents have. A lot of us have more than what our parents have. We have more things. They will fight, through, and more things you get, the more things you become obligated to, you're attached to, you got to keep up, you got to have, it's got to this, it needs time, it got to be fixed, it got to be taken, it got to be careful, and that pulls a part of you too. All of it, it pulls a part of us. So you have to learn how to possess all things yet possessing nothing. That's wild, ain't it? Hello? How you do that? Possess all things yet possess nothing. Look at Yahushua. In the book of Tahalim, he told you, he said, I know all the files of Shamaim. 
How did he know that now? By name. By name. You know, you look at, oh, what, what it is? What that, what? He said, I know all of them by name. He said, I own all the cattle upon a thousand hills. He said, if I were hungry, I wouldn't tell you. He said, for the, for the rice is mine and the fullness. Can you imagine you sitting around and you had to be born, being born in a stable? And you own everything? Would that kind of be like owning all things yet possessing none of them? Can you imagine you had to have somebody have a room stayed for you just to go sit down and have a dinner in? In somebody else's house? Somebody else have a donkey sitting there and you had to go and they had to say, you have need of it. Versus it's yours. Shouldn't have to ask nobody nothing. Possessing all things yet having nothing. See, he taught us that. You can have things. Don't let things have control of you. Be able to release from them. Don't let things be your whole going and doing. For a lot of us in life, getting things is important for us. Having things is important. You're human. He don't want us to have things. He just don't want things to have us. And a lot of times the problem comes with us, things wind up possessing us. You might not think it. Do it do. When it pull your mind, when you can't think, when you got to be concerned about it and worry about it, and it's his time. What you think? You allow him to possess you. Because everything you got, he loaned it to you. The more we understand that, the more we get the uh, knowledge of that, then the more we learn how to kind of navigate, you know what I'm saying, how to move, you know, how much you can put in the things you got. Because a lot of times, people put their whole heart in what they got it. And we don't want to be those type of people now. We want to put our whole being inside of Yahuwah and learn if he give you something, he only give it to you because it's a tool to you and it ain't just for you, it's for somebody else. Hello? Look at you. Look at you. Everything he got was for his benefit and for ours. Even the mouth. Now we know he came out here for a mouth cool. Did he not? Did he not come down here for a mouth cool? That he could have his own mouth cool. But then he talked about you in there eating and drinking with him. He talking about setting you up and letting you have something too. So see, even after it was still about you. It was about you, him and coming. In his mood, and it was about you in his throughout. You would think, and he got up. Really, I'm done with y'all niggas. I ain't got nothing to do with y'all. Everybody, it's on you. You know, he still wants you to come in and hear. I'm still working. He said, even after I move, he said, I'm still working. After I got up, even after I've been like, I'm done, dust myself off, I'm done. He said, no, I got to go back. I got to prepare a place. Still got right up and had to go to work. Can you imagine that? I got these holes in my hand and my feet. You know what I'm saying? I got a wound in my side. And you're like, man, what you going to fix yourself? Now, I got to go and prepare a place for you. That way I am. It's always about you. You don't consider. So, you know, it's an insult to him to feel like, uh, for you to say, nobody cares. You all alone. I mean, all the way up to moot this man died. Then he had to get right up from now and still working. And then on top of that, he's sitting up there right now appearing right there in the presence of all of him for us. You won't want him to see you, not you. You won't want him to see you through him. You won't want him to see you. Because see, the problem we got, and when he look at you, all of him don't look at the outward appearance. He look on the law. He look on the intent. He look on the purpose. So it's better if he look through him to see us. Hello? Our purpose is not always 100% what it's supposed to be. Our drive is not all we got always toward him. So it's better that he see us through him. Somebody had to stand in the presence of him for us. Somebody had to sit there to appear in this man, for me and you. Did y'all know that? Wow. Guess you thought you had dealt enough when you got wet and dried off. That was it. He appeared right there before all of him for me and you, for you and I. Give us an opportunity. Get this word, go through him, look at it, sit down and get some understanding so we know how we supposed to please all of him. That's how he said, so you would abound. See, when you please him, you abound more and more. Where we get that from? Hands. 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 Oh, goodness. Oh. Hold on. Oh, I had a hallway hand. Y'all know how all that is that? He beat you, Bishop. Ed, why you, why you put your hand on Ed? You got an answer. What's the answer? Come on, Ed. Let's go. Let come, come on, Ed. Come on, Ed. Yeah, gang. They don't tell them. Let them tell them I caught these guys doing. Do what they do. They look around, no hands up, and they throw it up. Then they like, he ain't gonna get to me. He gonna go with the first hand. But then it looked like I was in it. You see what I'm saying? I got him. You got one. All right, hold on. Let me see what I got. Hallway. Ryan. 
You got that answer? Tell me what happened. Yeah, that's right. He right from Barashit. See, when he made everything in the garden in the beginning, he told me it was two. That means it pleased him. He told it to multiply. How's what we know about it? Cause, and think about why it was two. He just told it to do something and it did it. He said, let the, he said, let the, the grass come forth, yielding herb and seed. You ain't going to believe what they did. They left there and they went to Pike Nursery. And they went there and they got a special, or they had a coupon, and that spring, some flowers were going to be delivered, and they were going to put them down there. All they did was what he told them. They just, that's what they, they just came forth, and they just started producing herb, yielding seed. That was it. He said, that's, he said, that's two. All you did was what I told you. People started trying to find out. I'm trying to think. I mean, I want to do something like real special. You don't want to obey. You don't want to obey. Because all he told them to do, that's, he said, you know, that's two. With Yahushua, everybody look at, he said, that's my yet to die being beloved son, a copy B son, beloved. And whom? You ain't going to believe why. He just did what I told him. Everybody had made it so much complicated. He, why wouldn't he? He did what I asked the gun and the gun to do. Just do what I asked you to do. That's it. Do what I asked you to do. And you know what? That, that throw people. That's too simple. It's some more. That's your problem. That's all I want you to do what I told you. Guess what? And now, guess what? He said, and now you can abound. More and more. You know why? Because you know what commandments we gave you. See, in the fact that they could obey it and comply and do it, so then you know. Then you know, right? How could you, how could you do something you don't know? Is it possible to do something? You can't. So guess what? You know. That can hurt you and that can help you. Because with Adam, he knew and he didn't do. That can hurt you. It's a benefit to us to know and to do it. Y'all got it? Okay. I just want to make sure we got it. All right, we're going to get ready to try to move forward, talk to y'all a little bit. See fit. If y'all want it to. Let me open on these here. Okay. Oh. Uh, look at Romans. <sighs> Some stuff we didn't even finish yesterday, did we? A couple of things we were talking about other stuff. Let's say bye. Uh da 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 fifteen four. All right. What are we doing over here? Okay. All right, let's go. Listen. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, preacher, hold on. I thought somebody behind the carriage. Look, I got to do the Kato Sarah. that <clears throat> okay listen whatever for Nikatab in the past all for our Lamed and we read other verse that said Kudash correct Yes, sir. Kadash, okay. In the past. Mm -hmm. Nikatab, so that through endurance and through the Nakum of the Kitubim, your call we might have. Mm. Something interesting. Let, let, let's look at something coming to my mind. <clears throat> this morning, we'll say, I, I don't know how to read it. Mm. Mm. Let's say, uh, your call's a call. They call it Ezekiel, your cause call, which means that Yahuwah strengthens. Let's just look at some. He 
Ezekiel chapter 9 that they'll call it your cause of call, your who will strengthen. Hands on your who a situation where you who strengthened before. Rod, think about it. Can't think of it. You know the answer. Who all the hand went? One, two, three. I saw him shoot up. Who hand was up first? Ian hand was up first. All right. Ian about to stretch your arm out the muscle. Let's see what he got. Let's see what he got. We'll get him. It'll be some more. Let's see what he got. What we got, Ian? Exactly. I like that. You want to say that? Yeah. He asking you who are the strengthen in that one more time. That was the same answer you had. So what you had, Ryan? No, tell him what he did. Yeah, that's true. He did strengthen him. What you had, uh huh? Okay. I'm going to check because I had our, we done said that like three, four times. That's all. It ain't nothing personal. Yeah, it is personal. Go and put that check up there. I nah, ain't good. No. Nah. Well, that's, 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 that's correct too. That is true. So it's always something to think about. So you think about if a person weak, and a lot of times people will go to Tahaline. They go find something in the book of Psalms. When we know how, it's like a library. They'll, they'll affix a library a certain type of way. You'll put biographies, uh, fiction, other different things. They have science fiction. You know, they'll break it down into different categories. So depending on what your expert studies or your pleasure are, you know what I'm saying, you can go there and you can go to that area and those books will reference what it is you're looking for. You got what I'm saying? Encyclopedias, they'll do it, and they'll do it by letter category, A through C. You know what I'm saying? They'll break them down in different areas. So if it's something you're looking for in a certain area, it helps you where you can I get more to your subject matter quicker. Well, for us, the way our, our, our scrolls were set up, so you can get to your subject matter. You know what I'm saying? Look at what he told you. Um, see if that's uh, Oriya 24. 44. They'll call it Luke. And see that book, y'all shining. You know what I'm saying? He's shining. Y'all got it, which means he's manifesting for us because we know what light does. Light make manifest. Or I think the definition for light means to make clear. So the fact that now we learn he has a book written or have a scroll written that's called Y'all Shine. You know what I'm saying? Which means he's manifest. He makes clear. So we're going through to see where he makes clear. If I'm like, I'm kind of confused on some certain area, this is a book I can kind of target an area that lets me know I want to see things be made clear. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times we kind of fog in mind on certain things that we're trying to see and trying to do. But he's proven himself by doing it before. He brought him out Misraim. They was in Kashal. Yeah? yeah that see that? We'll see uh, how that work out. This is Oria 24. They call it Luke. Are y'all learning anything? Uh, well, Sometimes y'all be like, I don't know what y'all got going on. I know this thing. This thing wrapping up faster than what people know. Y'all have no idea how fast it's wrapping up. Okay. Now let's see. Everything y'all sitting around, y'all not paying attention. He wrapping this thing up. He wrapping up real fast and people missing it. And I can see how it'll happen. Because you even look at him and talk about his destruction, how things happen. Because it don't make sense that people would still be married and giving him marriage. If the world were in it right now, who, who would be trying to get married? Right now, the world, who would be trying to get married? You waiting to get married, correct? Would you try, right now, the, the, the world of brother is ending. Would you be trying to get married right now? Why the world ending? Come on, get this, Chris. Come on, Chris. Come on, Chris. Come on, Chris. Man, blazing everybody. He's talking about, where about at? He's like, we're running for our life. The average person. <laughs> well, he, he thought about it. He said, should I say, yeah? <laughs> we had to get that check out of him. So, but you think about it. If, if the world were ending, as people would know it to be ending, the average person wouldn't be doing what they're doing. He said they're going to be marrying and giving them marriage, and they were going to be drinking and eating. Nobody would be doing that in a, in a if your house, was, your literal house was on fire. Your little, how many of y'all would be sitting down and say, well, I had to get something to eat? How many of y'all say, well, let me give me something to drink? I mean, your house, bla it's, on, it's all that I said, your whole house. But how many of y'all be sitting there and say, let me just go in and get me something to eat? I'm hungry. Man, I'm going to sit down and drink me a bill. Because it wouldn't be common sense. So guess what? It's set up in a way that these people don't recognize it. it that's the only way it would make sense. Why would they be doing it? 
You think those people, let me tell you something. You either believe something by information or by actions executed, okay? That's it. You don't believe it by information or actions you've seen executed. You think those people in Simon Gomorrah would have still been homosexual and he knew he was he finna burn that place up? Those people had no idea. They were trying to sleep with the Maliki. Let's be honest. That you actually know these men come from Allahim. And they are here to burn this place up because we're gay. Some of those people would have repented. You don't think about this, so now we're talking. Why didn't they, instead of Lou House, why didn't they go to the other people's house and try to talk to them and convince them? The fact that they sat right there, the fact that it was that close to them, and they never talked to them about it. Even when they stood in the door, Luke talked to them. They never said a word to those guys. And one of them even told them, said, and this guy is looking at us like he's a judge. He never said nothing to him. Luke was trying to ask them not to do this. He said, these men have come to buy under my roof. And I ask you, don't do this. I got two daughters that never been with me. You could take them. And they became, and they snatched Luke in the door and closed them and struck them with blindness. Which meaning they couldn't see anyway. And they were still hard set bent on the action they behavior. Never even told it to them. Left them right there until they destroyed. And pulled him out. Now you want to ask yourself a question. Can, who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean thing? He showed you he could do it. They said, no, not one. Yahuwah brought Lut and his daughter out of an unclean thing, and they were clean. That's what your writing asks. Who could bring a clean thing out of an unclean thing? What was Simon Gomorrah? He brought Lut who they called Lot and his daughters out, which meaning they were clean. He brought a clean thing out of an unclean thing. Okay, go figure. It was his intent. It was his intent not to say those people. We, we, can you imagine when, you, when these people come back and look at that? Salvation was right there at the door. Had I known it, I would have took it. If people would have stopped doing what they were doing right then, Listen, hold your God right quick. We, we, we'll come here and see if that's um, 11. Four, three, four, four, 23. Matthew, see if 11 and 23. Let's see what happened. Well, in fact, go to 22. I see everybody still throwing their little words right now. Listen. But I say to you, for Tari and Sed Sedan, more tolerable will it be in the Yum of Moshpot than for you. Mm, and? You, Capernaum, not to Shamayim, will be exalted mm -hmm. to. Hades will so be brought to Sheol. To Sheol will be word. brought down. Uh, so he said that instead of them being exalted, they was exalted. They felt like they were, had already been lifted up to Shamayim. He said going to be brought down to Sheol. Listen, why? For if in Sodom had taken Malcolm, the miracles having taken Malcolm in you, it would have remained. So uh, now he told them why it was going to be more tolerable for Sedan and Tyree. He said because had the same works been done in Sudan and Tyree, had been done in Simon and Gomorrah, he said it would have remained to this day. Do y'all know if don't, if those Malachi would have told them, said, listen, we down here, we finna destroy that place because of the homosexuality and the wickedness in him, and we're gonna burn this whole city up in Mosh Pot, judgment. Do you not know all them people would have, they would have repented. Remember, Abraham told him if it be 50, he said, I'll spare it. 
He said, what if at 40? He said, if at 40, I'll spare it. He said, what if it's only 30? He said, if at 30, I'll spare it. All he needed was 20. He told me, what if it's 10? He said, get out. He said, get them out. I'm going to destroy the city. So they could have gotten anywhere from about 20 to 50 people that would have repented. He said, and I would have let the city stay. He said, I never let them hear it. But guess what? I let the same works happen here with you. That didn't happen there and they got destroyed. Now, it's going to be harder for you than it was for them. So for some of us that feel like it's a better thing that you've gotten to repent or getting the teachings of repenting, the fact that you want to acknowledge it, he says it's going to be worse for you in the day of much pot than it's going to be for them. He said, because had they heard it, they'd have repented. And it would have still been here to this day. So when you're getting it, a lot of times you take for granted. You see what I'm saying? At the same time, you don't consider it's going to be harder for you. He even told you that them that know his Adon's will and did it not, he's going to beat them with many stripes. But them that didn't know, he's going to beat them with a few stripes. See, that's something we can consider because the fact you knew, you know better. Hello? Okay. Maybe it's not that important. Let's go ahead and look at Ori, all right, quick. So your death ain't the only thing you're going to suffer. You still got to suffer when you go to Sheol. What, 11, 20? Well, I'm sorry. Ori, y'all, 24 to 44. They call it Luke. All right, listen. And he said, now unto them, Do what? These are the Dabarim of me, which I spoke to you, still being with you. See now, while I was with you. That it behooves to be fulfilled all things. Must. Having been Katab in the Torah of Moshah. Having been written in the Katab of Moshah. And the Nabaim. And the Nabaim. And the Tahalim. Doing what? Concerning me. Start giving you order how things were put together, how a book was put together systematically, how things were being done, <coughs> how you need to go back, and how you need to look at it, how you need to consider it. See, a lot of times we don't consider how things. Christian church is more or less just grab something and read it and run off and just start teaching something or start saying something or take a message to something. But we have an order to things. So while he was with them, he took them all the way back to borrow sheep because that's the ending. The beginning is the ending. That's it. The beginning is the ending for these people. They have no idea. But because of how it's set up and it's designed that a certain people are going to know about it. That's why these people try to keep you away from this knowledge. People don't want you to know how it's constructed. This is what, it's like a lot of time with school, teaching kids how the system is set up helps make them a better student. Some kids don't know how it's set up and that's why they fail. They wonder why they fail and why they can't get it because they don't understand how it's set up. The same thing with this, people don't understand why they don't get it because they don't understand the system, how it's set up. He designated for a particular people. He did, he actually designated for a particular people. And through us doing what we did, it was supposed to be the attraction to draw other people to it. Now when other people come to it, they were gonna walk into a system that's already been predicated and set up, which means now they were gonna start to mimic. Y'all get it? You'll start to mimic. The same thing with uh, Yasakal, with, um, what's it about, Ishmael. Ishmael, Ishmael. Ishmael did the same thing. He started to mimic. That was the, that was the one of the promise. Why wouldn't he mimic him? The baby wasn't mimicking him. Hello? He told you that the elder was going to serve the younger. Ishmael saw the baby. He started, he started imitating the baby. The baby went, typically a child will start imitating you, wasn't it? No, he imitated the child. That's what the people are supposed to do when they see you. Unfortunately, you tend to start mimicking everybody else. Versus everybody else supposed to be mimicking you. Because, see, you the seed of promise. Hello? And the only reason he's doing all this, he's coming back, is because of his word. Hello? Okay. Let's see what he did. Let's see what he did then. What happened? Then he opened their mind to understand the Kitabim. So anybody can just get in and start reading it. He just went over it and said, I've been telling you this the whole time I've been here with you. About three, I think it's believed to be about three and a half years he worked with him. But then he had to open their understanding so they could understand what they were hearing and what they knew and what they were reading. 
So you you think you can just pick this book and just go home in your private time and start reading and get it? <laughs> no, sir. This Yahushua doesn't That's know right. this well. That's right. <laughs> What's the opposite of open? Can you imagine being told something for three years and you've been what they call closed minded? See, that's what we've been. That's how that that's that's scary. That you could be there that long and still not get something. So it's that important for us to look at um, how we have to follow. What's the, his intent? Really making sure we consider that we actually get this. That we understand this is this is dedicated to a particular people. He was trying to show us how he was going to take them a people from a people. That's what he did. See, unlike what people would try to put it, Yasharal, Yehudi, whatever you want to call us and what we use now, we all came from a people. He just separated us. That's how we became who we were, separation. So when you hear about the separated word, it makes sense because that's what he did. He took us from somebody. Abraham, Abraham was Armenian. What they were called Syrian. These people were, he was somebody, he came from a different fault line of people. He took him from out of a people to make him a people. He didn't go to the dust and form another man. He said, no, I'm going to take me a people out of a people. That's what he did. He took him a people out of a people. So when we go back through our writings and we start to consider that matter, things come in to make sense. Even when he sat down, um, Yasakak and um, Asu, he let his aim know these are two nations. I'm taking a seed and I'm going to make a nation from them. These are two nations that's in your womb. I'm going to establish me a set of people coming out from your womb. Two boys coming out of the same womb, yet I'm going to separate them. I'm going to make me a people. Hello? I'm appreciative that he's come along and he's realized I'm going to set me a people. And this people are going to do a certain particular act, just like when Yahushua talked to the woman at the well. He's seeking something. He said that's what the Arbiter, he's looking for something. He's seeking for something that will shakar him, that will adore him. Like they worship, when you adore somebody. You'll see something, they say, you, you'll get people like, people like, I mean, when I was growing up years, I don't know if they do that now. You had a poster, your favorite artist or somebody, you ever do that, that? And people do stuff and they'll write, they be like, they'll collect stuff about them. You'd be like, good, and you just love said so. He said, that's what they're going to do for me. They will adore me. When they take my name, they try to glorify name. He said, they're going to beautify my name. Y'all have, they're going to decorate my name. Y'all got it. They're going to give it a certain appearance to it. Y'all got it. So now when you look at us, he said in the um, Dabari Hayamin that if my people which are called by what was again? By his name? Then you should be decorated. Because you decorate the shim. So if you wear the shim, the name, then you should be decorated. Hello? Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? Because you don't consider the attachment. Because it ain't about all that and people try to make it about things. It gave them a sense of understanding. Think about it, he had a name. Anything to his name, it was to be decorated, be kept a certain type of order, right? That's how they learn it first. Anything you say, Yahuwah Shem deserved this homage to it, that you bow, you stop, you acknowledge, you do. So that first. Now, I'm going to put my Shem on this house. So how would you treat that house? You're going to decorate that house. You're going to give homage to that house. You know what I'm saying? It, the things you're going to, you're going to look at that house with a certain type of honor to it. Then he said, I don't, I don't, I don't want to come, I don't come in that house. I don't come in. You're like, I done did all that. I want, I want to come inside you. I want to put my name on you, and I want to dwell in you. So now you got to decorate. That's a certain order how it should be kept. Then what should come in that house? Nothing unclean. Nothing that defiles itself. Nothing that goes contrary to. Because the name is there. 
And now he said, this is a habitation. So then we started learning when we set Jerusalem up and how things were done, it was all predicated based off of where he dwelt. And anywhere where he dwelt had to be Kudash. It had to be separated. You know what I'm saying? It had to be decorated. So he would have us to make certain ornaments and things. We put on, he said, make it a gold. And use silver and use certain type of brass. I don't want any metal, I don't want any stones to use to be beaten on it. Don't beat on it with anything. Because you will realize it was set by because of what it was. I didn't want certain things touching it or to handle it. And they understood that hands from well. Can it type? Answer. That's right. Don't touch my anointed. My Mashiach is what it is. But they would also learn it when it sat in the gun. He wasn't supposed to touch that tree, the ox. They'd have learned it in the gun. Don't touch it. Listen, the tree gave you knowledge. The tree gave, so you know, you, you, in other trees, you just grab it. Ain't it you don't even say I can get it. you like, just slap it down. Get a little stick there, pop it down. Ain't no big deal. What about that one? Don't touch that one. Not one. He don't want us to touch that one. It's symbolic too. And, and guess what? It has the knowledge. It's eye opening. We can't touch it. So how we look at this tree? Yes, sir. Like the art? Like the art? Mm. Yes, you could kind of look at that. But it was a, yes, sir. Kudash, separated. We could look at all of that. All those different things we would look at it as. So now, when you look at Yahushua when he came, Hello? Let's think about it. Let me see. Hands, I need y'all to tell me one thing the tree could do. All right, got him down. One thing. Make one wise. Make one wise. Then open he to understand, they might understand the kit of being. Would there be somebody to the tree? Yes, sir. Y'all tell me. Yes, sir. Would that be some? Yes, sir. The, make, the tree could make one wise. What were he doing if he just taught it to them and then he just opened the understand they understand it? Wow. What else? Something else the tree could do. Y'all gonna let him do this? Yeah. <laughs> you, you, I'm gonna pull your arm out of the socket. You do this right here? What is it, yeah. You ain't sure? All right, we got another one. Oh, hold on, hold on. Ed, yeah, you got an answer? Is it the right answer, Ed? Is it the right answer? <laughs> I right, yeah, whatever. Feed you. Yeah. You know he fed five thousand men, not include women and children. On more than one occasion. Ain't that amazing? What else could it do? Yeah. I'm sure this hmm? I'm sure what is it? Give knowledge. Give knowledge? I had Cam for you. What you got, Cam? I'm sure I do something. <laughs> Thank you. Whew. I don't say I can do it with my back. I ain't, I, just, I ain't not had the power to that. That was hard. I had. I felt sweat coming. Uh uh, Christian. Credit. Is this the answer? Or is this a check? He said, "This is the answer." What you gonna sign? Show. So I do my hand behind my back. I don't mean to use all my power like that. So I think that you use all your power to make you weak and break it down. Now what you got, John? I'm trying to know. I'm trying to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, times I do a cough, make it come out. What if we got? Make it like Allahim. Can make it like Allahim. That's what he was trying to do. That's what he was trying to do. Construct us to be like. So you now you can see the similarities. Now you can see the similarities of how he actually worked and what he demonstrated. Now you can see the action. And then, you know what I'm saying? And their eyes were open. And you know that Yahushua sat down and took clay and anointed the man's eye, opened his eyes. 
He opened a man's eye. What was he? Uh, what was, all this was symbolic to try to show us. The fact that we gave him over, they tried to give up. No, 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 no. You crucify. We're going to let you do that. We just voted on it, but we don't, because we were told to touch not, taste not, handle not. For all of the perish with the using their oil. That's why these nations are going down, because they didn't understand what they were doing. And we were clearly told in 1st, 2nd second Corinthians, uh, I think, 1st um, Corinthians, 2nd chapter, they're talking about had they known, 2nd Corinthians, I think it is, too. He said, had they known, you know what? They'd have never done it. You see that? That led to their destruction. They didn't know. Had they known, they wouldn't have done it. Y'all got it. That's why we knew better. When they gave him over, they tried to tell the co honey, they told him, and I like, and according to our law, we can't put him to death. We told him clearly, we couldn't do it because of the Torah. See, we talked about before, the Torah has um, such a working, the idea of it. The same thing that could come and slay a man is the same thing and give a man life. The same thing. It's a law for a seed. That a seed have to die before it can ever. Listen, it has to die before it can give life. Y'all know that? That's a law. So when you look at the law, you typically look at the law as just slaying you. But you do know you have to die before you can live. Hello? Does the embryo live inside the one before it actually gets germinated? I don't know I say I'm shaking their head. I don't know. I don't know. Do y'all know that? It couldn't. It don't get life until it gets, until it's germinated, until it's fertilized by the man's semen. So at that point, it takes on life. Well, it's the same thing we look at now. We ain't taking on life until he came here, and it germinates. I know they use for seed. I don't think seeds can screw each other. So you had to, you know, the semen come and germinate because it germinate. Bro, I'm going to get a check, Rod. Help me out. Am I? <laughs> Rod, come on, get a check. You let me out. I'm going to let my eye out. Hey, Rod, do it back at me now. <laughs> I thought we were having an eye fight over here, Rod. What happened? You probably can't help me. Get out of there faster. Germinate. Right? Correct. See, thank you. <laughs> I was so no worried up here, too. So, at least we're getting new people on the board, too. Are they helping y'all? How many of y'all are helping y'all out getting new people on the board? checking. All right. So, so at the end of the day, our goal is to get this understanding. Let, let, so let, let, let's look at this. So now he opened the understanding, might understand the Kitavim, the writings. And what did he say? And he said to them, thus it is Katab was to suffer the Mashiach and to come out from the moot, the third yun, and to be proclaimed in the shem of him. And what did it say? Be preached? I mean, I think in the over said preach would say that you're proclaiming something in the shim of him. Rep uh -huh. Repentance and, and forgiveness of Katayim so to that, all. So you got to ask yourself, the fact that it was written and this was set up and predicated on all the actions of what we knew from the Torah. First of all, whenever the act of Katayim's sins were done, it was of necessity that there be a death. It was, it's a necessity. It had, a light had to be given. Because an action violated the law. Every law, the law was all predicated on death. Everything was death on the law. Y'all got it? So what were people, to me, looking at this, it tells me that people were waiting for something or it was needful for something to come because otherwise man wasn't going to be saved. The fact that he let them know that they had something they could put confidence in, that now I'm going through so you can understand the writing. And then let you know it was a must that what was written, that he had to come, he had to suffer, and that he had to be put to death, and that he was going to come the third doom. And that's the only way you were going to get repentance and remission. Y'all got it? The repentance and the remission is the removing of. Y'all got it? The repentance, you come in remorseful, and people no doubt were remorseful, but was it ever removed? Hello? It's like some things will stay on your credit for a longer time. You'll think it should, you'll say it should have fell off. It's not. It hadn't been no remission. So what we were looking for with Yahushua coming in, we were looking for the remission. And we were trying to get to a state of, well, we didn't have to come and we had to offer anymore. 
See, one thing became a part, think about this, you constantly, think about all of us. <clears throat> Periodically, or regularly, you commit critique, okay? Whether through knowledge or no knowledge. Well, there were things you had to go find particular. It wasn't just, I'm gonna keep a whole bunch of sheep. Something didn't call for a sheep. Something could have been a goat. Something could have been a turtle dove. Certain things called for a Pacific cattle. Because the red heifer was different than just a regular a bullock. Y'all got it? <clears throat> so all these things set you on a search of, depending on what I've done. And this is a constant that you're doing every day and every year. Every day they're doing offerings. On Shabbat, it's double. Once a year for kafar that they call um, atonement, everybody had to come and offer. And then there was a cost to it. You had to give a half a shekel. He says, for your soul. He said the rich couldn't give no more. Just say, I said, you ain't got it. I, I got care. Like sometimes you go somewhere, I'm going to pay for somebody. He said, you can't pay for his. He said, he got to pay for his own. Care said, I ain't got it. Well, that's what he care about. So I like it. If he don't have it, that's what he care about his soul. Because he wasn't changing nothing he said. Everybody had to give it from 20 years old. It don't make sense. Well, I ain't got it. You can't play little drummer boy. You had to get it. And if it's a cost and it's expense, he said, that's only because the redemption of your soul is costly. So they started understanding it was an expense behind committing sin. I've done something today. I've done something three or four times a day. I got to go and pay for this. It's the, I'm sending a line with a whole bunch of other people done confess, who done done something. So it's a weight and it's a stress on me that's a burden. And the man who's offering it got to be stressed out because he got to come to the door and get it. And you got to look at him. Oh, yeah. Before I can start, y'all give me a minute. I got to go offer something for myself. So you see what kind of stress. Think about you in a long line. You talking about they came out with about 600 some thousand people. They as they grew. So what this line looking like? Downtown Atlanta traffic. With four wrecks. All lanes shut down. Do you see why it was a need for him to come? We need somebody to lift the burden off of us. Not just the fact, though, it, it became, and he needed us to understand that I got to make it this way. Come trying to get you to stop doing it. When there's no call, you just say, Lord, I'm sorry. Keep going. I just pray later on. But for them, it wasn't no I pray later on. You got to get this right now. Yeah. Yeah. And all we had was a bunch of dead animals. He was trying to look at maybe the stress, maybe the inconvenience would get them to consider, do you see what you're having to go through? To get this right, and you think it's saying, man, you know what? I got to get this. This ain't one of the things like, spirit, put your GPS and see how to get around it. If it's a shortcut, you stuck. So when Yahushua was coming, he took so much off of us. Not that he gave us a license to go in to commit Qatar. Like I said, what, shall we continue in Qatar that his con may abound? Yahushua said no. And that's what people looked at. If he took it off, what that mean? I mean, it's on. We could just do it when we get ready. We, no, he said, no. He said, no, that, that's not what I did. I was trying to take some of the burden off you and let you see what he actually, what he actually offered you. You know what I'm saying? Taking the stain off of you. Sometimes you don't got to have, anybody had a stain in something they really like, realize you just got to get rid of it. The stain is too much. He said, well, guess what? That's what it is with cotton. Your stain too deep. I can't do nothing with it. Really just got to dispose of it. It shows up. It's so unbearable. You was like, you try to wear it. You might say, I can get a pin and put it on there. You realize, no, I can't find nothing to fit it. It's just, it just, it's run. I got to get rid of it. Don't y'all know that's what sin is? You can't cover it up. You can't hide it. It shows up. And that's why he look at, I got to get rid of you. So he comes with a man now, you ain't going to believe it. He can remove the stain. The stain, because you know the stain you get from sin is death. The mess thing. You getting towels and wiping and them chloral pen. You can't get rid. It's death. That's what he came to do. He came to take away the stain of death. He took it away from him. Everybody got it. Once you committed talk, you got it on you. You just don't see. Why you think you're dying? He sees it. It's all over you. It's a little mob that's sitting on you saying die. It's a stain, and this man came to take the stain away. That you don't have to die the second time. 
You got to pay for what you've done. And it's important you pay for what you've done. So you realize the severity of what you've done. You realize the consequence of what you've done. And then you want to look at, does it make sense to continue in that way when you've already put yourself in a state that you can't return from that one? So now we look for the second one. But in order for us to live in the second one, we got to get this right now, even though we're at the point of death. And it still works out for our good because we just went over that everything that lives has to die in order to really give life. Hello? Take a seed out of an apple, take a seed out of an orange, take a seed out of a grape, and don't let it die and seeking it give you life. Seeking it produce any more. The only way it can do it, it gotta die. So when he set Yahushua down, it was so important that he mimicked the tree. That he uh, mimicked the ability of the tree, the arts, so we understood what he was giving us. This opportunity to become as Elohim. Because the book declared, um, now are you the benim of Elohim. And it doth not appear what we should be, but we know when he shall appear, we shall be. For we shall see him. And every man that have this, you're calling him, what? purify himself. Even because he purified himself. That's why he immersed himself. He came to Yukonah's immersion. Because he wanted to purify himself. He would teach, he had a message of purification. It only made sense that if that was his your call, that he purified himself. That way he said, I have need for you to immerse me. I need to be immersed. Because I came for purification. See, our Torah has taught purification. From the Kohan, he knew when he came, he had to wash his flesh with water and take his clothes out that he could put on the others. Then he was able to go inside of the bed. And when he came out, he had to take those off and he had to put back on his regular clothes. You ain't going to believe it. That's what Yahushua did. Yeah. When he came from Shamayim, he had to take those clothes off and put on the other clothes. Yeah. The clothes that he'd be just like everybody else. Yeah. That was it. Signified he had completed the service. That's what they did. Even when they took him, they had to wash him up. Before they took him and put him in there, they had to wash him, put him up. All these things were neat, but we would have never known this had it not been for the, for the scriptures, for the writings. The writings gave us that. So we understood the actions that he was demonstrating versus he came, he died, he was born, he rose. And he had no understanding. He had no understanding. So the people that knew the Torah understood. Okay? So that's what we're looking at, repentance. <clears throat> the reason why he would have told them all this, repentance the remorsefulness and the forgiveness of Kataim, plural, to listen to all who? Now we're looking at something that we're going to spread first. Now, now we know he's talking about more than just us. Listen to what he told you at. What did he tell him? Having begun from Jerusalem. Having begun, it had to start at Jerusalem. <clears throat> it had to start there first. It had to start with us first. It had to start with us first. See, all these were things we had to be mindful. See, the people that had been reading and had their confidence in the first writing, a second writing has come in. So what is going to put us at? He lets you know the second didn't come to void out the first. That's why he told you, don't think I came to destroy the Nabiim. Because if people, so it made no sense for me to study this. Because now he done came in with something totally new and abolished all of this. He said, I've never done that. I only gave you the first so you understood what I did the second. That's why I gave it to you, so you understand I do it the second. Hello? Yes, this is what we're coming to our understanding of doing, the importance of the reading, the importance of the writing, the importance of comprehension, the importance of our obedience, because the people that he came to, and the reason why it's so hard-pressed for Christians, because this is not a life they live. This ain't even a mindset they consider. Why would he tell me the only reason for me that you would tell people that you just went through, hey, I'm going to be crucified the third day I'm going to get up, and then I'm going to get repentance and remission, it would only tell me this was something they had to be looking for. What You saying to do that, I ain't looking for that. I don't want somebody to come out who's looking to come out and pass our EBT card. I'll be honest with you, I'm not looking for it. So you wouldn't benefit me with it. Because that was never something I had your call or hope in. That was never something I was desiring that I was seeking. The people we were talking to were people of his own who would know this is what we've been waiting on. We've been stuck. 
We've been waiting on to be able to get to a point where this stuff can be removed. It can all just be over with. I always had stuff and I like you say, you know what? I can't wait to just get this over. That's what we waiting on. That's what they saw with him. Y'all got it? All right, let's look at this ninth chapter. I told you I'd get right quick. You call the call. They call it Ezekiel. You call the call, ninth chapter. Let's see how I read from here anyway. All right. Listen. And he called her out in my shama with a cold, loud yeah, saying, sound, saying, let draw near those who have charge over the city and each with a weapon deadly in his hand. And, and suddenly six on a sheen came from the direction of gate, the upper, which faces north and each weapon. What y'all learned about north? What that cell phone? Cell phone. What y'all remember learning about the north hand? Got one hand, one hand. Did I get one for y'all right now? You answered one earlier. What we got down? Huh? Yeah. Yeah, who then? You agree with that? Uh, huh? Huh? Come out. <laughs> Let me get a chat. What y'all remember me teaching y'all about the north? What y'all say? Somebody about a tree fell? A he fell? What you got, Diana? What you got? Dark, secret, and hidden. That's right. Dark, secret, and hidden. That's why it was important for y'all to know about it. Y'all were talking to he told y'all about when he told me in the eighth chapter to go through, he told me to dig through the wall. It was toward the north. It was, it was secret. He wanted him to go in and see the secret thing. They had secret things that they were portraying, they were doing. He wanted them to go in and do it. Look at what he wanted them to do now. He wanted them to take their He wanted every man that had the charge to take his weapon, each. I'm oh, sorry. Of the gate, the upper, which faces the north, each and the weapon. He want each one of those men and their weapons to go. And what do you want him to do? With his battle axe uh -huh. in his hand. And do what? And each one among them, linen was clothed with, and inkhorn of, a, of, of had a rider at his side. And they went in and stood all, beside altar, the bronze, and the kabood of the Elohim of Yasharal had gone up from the cherub, where it had been. Uh-oh, let's see what happened. That's something, just reading that. Similarity. He had a, a writing horn that went, and then what happened? And what went up from that uh, cherubim? And the kaboot of, Yash of the Elohim of Yasharal had gone up from the cherub. And guess what people would have noticed too? The people that would have noticed when Yahushua was up on the two. That the kaboot of Elohim had gone up from between the cherubims. When he sat upon it, when he was between the two thieves, they mimicked the cherubims. The cherubim had wings. So the thieves, when they put their arms up, to prove it, whether you play basketball, Jessica, can you tell them what that thing they measure when you put your arms out? Wow. So you can see where they looked at when they put them over him? He's that one. They hit it. So when they stood over him and their arms were up, that's what they were doing. They were similar to That's amazing, though. You think about what Bass writing is. Did they actually measure and call it your wingspan? Look at the portion that comes up from it. Ain't it amazing? They, they, they measure your wingspan. Well, those guys, when they were, let me show you again. This is what the problem they got. The one, this, this, let's do, the, let do what they did. Come on, to, no, 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 turn the other way. Turn the other way. Hand out. We're on the cross. Put your, so we at least got to be that much distant. And these two guys talking to each other. It would make sense if y'all came in and y'all put your hands up come in, and come over close to me because he would have been lower than them. So his hands have been up because they would have carried him. Hello? Okay, I'm trying to tell you. I already know how I had to worry. It don't make sense. Stuff they showed you don't make sense. Them right. three ice cream sticks don't make right. sense because he was, he was dwelling between the cherubims. They were turned facing him. That's how they were able to have a conversation. Ain't got time to be hollering past no man around no man over him. All the way because they were facing each other. They were mimicking the cherubim the same way they had the art. They were set between the cherubim they put them down, which means they were facing and their wings were covering over. 
He even told you, and with his wings, he was going to cover him. He that dwelled in the secret place of the Most High, owned by, well, the shadow. That's what they were using for, for the shadow. That's how you're looking at how the sun, how was the Shema not going to smite him by day? He told and under his wings, he was going to cover him. He been, <laughs> Chris, the anti makes a fool out of you. It really hurts you bad. It really is damaging because they don't really care about trying to show people the truth. They were so busy trying to run and show three ice cream sticks shooting down a straight road, which made no sense. It only made sense that they covered him. They sat over him. And they told you that the Kabuda of the went up from between the cherubim. This is what, when Yahushua moved, where do you think his ruach went? It went up from among them. See, a lot of things he was trying to tell but see, if you're not taught and it's not your writing, nor do you understand it, uh, historically how things were done by them, why would you pay attention to that? It makes more sense to bring again. This just makes sense. That just makes sense. How many of y'all, this is how you saw the, quote unquote, Jesus and the, and the, and the, and the two thieves, which makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. It made sense that they were come facing toward him because they were covering him. The same way when they had the art of the, of the Taba, because you had the cherubim that covered over it, which means they would have been covering over him. They were keeping him. How was the son not going to smite? He said they weren't going to smite him by day. It's good. That's fine. Because they, they, they don't want to know. When you don't want to know, you don't want to know. You, see, your God works in mysterious ways. That's why I want nothing to do with your God. Your God is dumbing you down, and hey, you believe something makes no sense, and these retarded people are still running behind something makes no sense. It's all predicated on what was done. This ain't me. This is what I come up with. That makes no sense. He ain't left nothing for us to come up with. Follow pattern. Follow patterns. Okay. Come on. So they got, this is what I have. Hold on for a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. Okay. Okay. Come on. And the kabood of the Elohim of Yasharal had gone up from the cherub where it had been, whereupon to the threshold of the Mashkan. And he called to the Ish, clothed with linen, who had inkhorn of the writer at his side, and said, Yahuwah, to go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and put a mark on the foreheads of the Anashim, who sighed and Sayak over all the abominations that are done within it. Oh, what you got? What would be the purpose when you start to look at this? Now, now this is what he just saw he going to do. He want the man who had the ink horn, the pen, to take the pen, and he want him to go through, and he want him to write on the foreheads of those men that sigh, those men that cried out. Now, this would no doubt be literal. Y'all have it? Literal. Okay? Now let's look at something. See if that's the fifth chapter of the book of um, Abarim. Let's start. He read it. He told the wife, so why they bury she? Abarim, the fifth chapter. <laughs> well, it's smooth. I had that arm up there with it. Uh, they call it Hebrew. Uh, uh, or they might call it Abarim. Abarim. Let me see that one. Uh, might be eight. What I want? Huh? No. Eight. I think it's eight is what I want. Eight. Drop down about five. Four. Let me see. Uh-huh. Drop down a little more. Oh, oh, oh. I'll take that seven. Well, we'll go to five. We'll see five. Let's see. All right, let's listen. Who a copy and shadow serve of the, of the Shamayim as was. Y'all hear what he said? Well, we started to play. We told you how to copy and the shadow. We talk about a shadow is a reflection off of an image. 
And we talk about a copy is something that you've taken from an original, correct? So now he's starting to let them realize that everything was set up. Basically, what we did down here was a copy. And it was a shadow, in a sense. Y'all got it? A lot of people we look at, they were shadows. Because they weren't the actual image. You got what I'm saying? Or they weren't the actual certain thing you had. It was a copy. Just like we set up things down here. When we <coughs> built Jerusalem and he gave us the dynamics of how Jerusalem be set up. That was a copy. But they played for a reason. Let's see what happened. Was Kodash Lamed Musha being about to come? Oh, wait a minute. We're here. We're right here? Yes, sir. All right, start again. I'm was Kodash Lamed Musha being about to complete the Mashakan? See that for he says, you shall make all things according to the pattern. Let's see that for a second. Make sure you copy it like the original. That's what he just told Musha. Copy it like the original. He just told you something, now he's giving you an example. Hello? Musha was not doing the original, he was doing a copy. That's right. That's right. You just told him to do all things after the pattern I showed you. That's right. Which means you are copying. That's right. Y'all got that? Yes, it's important. See, he come right back to show you this. That's why I appreciate the fact. We just go, we just read this stuff. You just right. keep running. I just told you everything was either shadow or copy. When Musha was up in the mount, when he was writing, guess what he was doing? Okay. Copying. Everything he showed you, when he, when he came out and showed you, the Mashkan should be like this, and this should be the length of it and the breadth of it. You said, man, he just came over that. No, he copied him. He showed him how to copy. That's all he was doing was copying. That's why Yahushua told you, had you believed the copy, you would have believed me. He got it from me. I'm the original. Okay. But see, you don't have no reason to think like that, because why would you think like that? We, we've dealt with Christianity so long, even from the Jane version. It damages you. You don't think. It don't, it really don't. Jane version is this. Let me take your hand and just spin you around. Like someone just twirling you around. Just leading you around. Versus these people had to understand it. They knew the difference between a shadow and a copy. This is how this was a copy. Okay? All right, let's see. Having been shown you wow. in the horror, now, however, more excellent, he has obtained a Sharath as much as also of a better. He is Berith, the mediator, which upon better Berith has been enacted. Okay. I'll start upon better promises. Listen what happened. If for the first that had been faultless, not for the second would have been sought a place. So now, now let's show you how that worked out. For the first, give me an example. Hands. Okay, yeah. This is the right answer? Then? You can use that one. How you feel? You were nervous? I'm going to get a check, though. That's what I was looking for. Though. So you shouldn't be that boastful. Who else we got? What we can use? That even better illustrated than Adam. We, we talk about Adam. Adam can be used, too. You only putting the check on because you like you got too high and mighty. Oh, Tim right now, green eye. The, think about that, what the question was. He said the first copy had been faultless, then there would have been no need for the second one. What you got? What's, a cold in your suit. I'm going to get a check. Come on, what you got, Dwight? What happened? What happened, yeah. You say broke the first one. Okay. That's it. That's it. That's why, because right, he found a fault with them. See, it wasn't the tourists. People think, see, when Mushad came down, he took it and he broke it against the heart when he first made them. When he copied them, he took them and he broke against the heart because the people had transgressed. But then later he came back in the 10th chapter of the book of Allah Hadabarini Kaduri. He told her to take him and cut him out two more step tablets. He said, bring them up. He said, I'm going to write the words on them that I had on the first one. So it couldn't have been the tour was the problem. I found a fault with them. So this is what he tried to tell you. Hey, Adam is a good answer. And do I need that check for that foot in that chair too? So now, two of them. Yeah, I've been watching that foot. I heard that he said he was pissed. He said, he was pissed. That was him. We get angry. 
So, so now what you're looking at, what all these things we told before was an example for us, an example so we understood. So when people come along and say, see, even the Bible said, see, God found fault with them, and that's why he got rid of the first covenant. He, he never did it. He found a fault with them. He, he had Mushal broke them because they broke them. But he came right back and told him, I want you to print, print I'm going to print the same thing I put on the first one, signifying I've never gotten rid of it. But Christianity told us the law was done away with. You see what I'm saying? But, ha but with no understanding, you would think the same thing. Listen, when, it, it don't matter what religion. I don't want to just put on Christianity. Religion teaches you to look at things a certain way. In that fact, you can take that King James Version. If you're a Methodist, you do not see that book the same way a holiness person see it. A Jehovah Witness don't. That's the problem with religion forms your mind a certain way till you can only see it this way. And the problem is, you're not dealing with his writings. You're dealing with people who say, okay, you know what? I don't like being with y'all. I'm finna just write out my own. And I'm gonna designate this is how we gonna do things. This is how we got all these different versions. See, when all these people look at Jane's version and using these versions, these, these versions are not accurate because this is your problem become, they're not even, they're so dumb they can't copy. Okay? None of these people can. They are formulating from Tinsdale's version. The problem you have with these people, Tinsdale never used these words you use. Tinsdale used congregation. Church is not congregation. They're going to come. Well, that's to say you're a liar because you're not even a good copier. If I'm copying, I'm saying the same thing you're saying. Especially when we're speaking, all of us speaking. Why am I writing church when the word is congregation? Because referring to the people, church is referring to a building, it's referring to a, a certain ethic of acting, which is contrary. That's why you got the pictures, that's why you got the figurine, because that is a church, those are attributes of a church. He told you when I came, you saw nothing. You only heard a voice. Lest you, what church taught us? You ain't got a church. They said, why does a church, where you across at? Where the pictures? You know, where the praying hands? Because that's a church. Right, right, right. It's not where he established. And Tisdale wrote and copied from writings that were more original. And guess what he saw? There is no church. I can't copy something that's not there. He's translated and he can't come up with church. These people today came up with church and it's the same thing as synagogue. It's retarded. It's retarded. Not in the same acts. We don't even go the same day. Everybody know church is Sunday. Yeah. Right. Everybody knows that. That's the word. It's church people keep, they keep Sabbath. We keep Shabbat. We read to them. That's why you had to come back. You got to come back through it. Yes, so look sir. what he did. Finding fault. With them, he says, behold, the Yahudim, the Yamim are coming, says Yahuwah. What you going to do? And I will ratify with the Beth of Yasharal and with the Beth of Yehuda, Abarith knew. Let's look up ratify. Sign or give formal consent to a treaty contract or agreement making it Officially valid. <laughs> Chris. My power's weighing down on me. So this is someone, look at, they use ratify. We know they change up the English word, but really for us to understand what he's doing, I'm trying to sign or give formal consent to a treaty contract or agreement making it officially valid. And that's what we're looking for him to do. That's what he was looking at. I had to come on and make it officially valid, okay? Because there's still some people that were holding to the old letter of the law. Y'all got it?
There are people that still hold to. He said, I'm coming in, I'm, I'm going to stop this contract, and I'm going to do a ratify. I'm going to make it valid, where people are going to look at this as my consent to what I'll agree to doing, okay? Let's see what happens. Not according to the bereft that I made with a both of them in the yume of having taken hold of by me the hand of them to lead them out of the arats of Mizraim, mm -hmm. because they did not did continue in the bereft of me, and I disregarded them, says Yahuwah. That's why I wanted to broke I, I mean, it don't make sense. It ain't my people. I give them my debauch. I give them my word. I give them my law. Since they broke it, I just took it away from them. I don't even regard them. I have no respect for you guys. Nobody looked. I have no respect for you guys. So I'm gonna come in and give you something to ratify. And I'm gonna come in and give you what I'll consent to and what I'll agree with. Listen. For this, the berith that I will make with the Beth of Yasharal after the Yamin, those says Yahuwah. What doing what? Putting Torah of me into the lob of them mm -hmm. and upon their lob of them Listen I will up. inscribe them and I will be to them for Allahim and they will be to me for an arm. You see that? Now he come back looking at not writing them on tables of stone. He's going to write them in your mind and in your heart. See those people we going looking at your cause of call. They call Ezekiel. He want him to write them on their foreheads. See the whole implication we're going to get to? I'm going to put them in your mind. I'm going to write them up in your law. They wouldn't understood that. That's why the day of Ukar Shabur, now when they heard this, that's right. He started to subscribe to get to the heart of man. He realized, listen, words written on pages of animal skin, a populace, which is a plant drawn out, all the different things, it don't keep a man from doing it. He said, I got to get on the man inward parts. It's got to be on the man inward parts. Y'all got it. That's what he looked at with Yahushua. I just took it and I wrapped it up and I put it on his inward parts. And that's what he looked at with us. It's got to get on the inside of us. The words on the page don't stop you from doing nothing. You can have convictions. I can, our convictions still did stuff wrong. That don't stop nothing. Not until they get in your heart. Not until it's in your mind. Y'all got it. And that's what he realized. So when you go back, we'll go back to your cause of call. And hold on for me. Stop for a second. Let me show, hold on. Let's see what else he going to do. What is he going to do? Have we finished that? And oh. no not shall they lament each the rea of him and each the ark of him saying know yahuwah because all will know me from the least to the greatest of them and tell what happened because recom i will be toward the iniquities of them and the kataim of them know not i shall recall recall zakar more see that i won't remember their sins anymore once i get this on the inward parts once I get this in their mind, he said, forget about it. Forget about it. That's, that's what I'm doing. I'm going to ratify it. I'm going to set up, guess what? I'm going to get rid of it. But the, all this is constituted because he already told about it. if a man turned from his iniquity, a man stopped to run, he said, I forget about it. But I got to get it inside his mind. I got to get it in his heart. So all these things that we look at, what these guys were doing, they weren't original. They were set up for us so we have an understanding. I got to put it. If it's on your forehead, whenever you see it and it reflects, then you remember it. Right? Anytime you look at a water reflection on a mirror, the glass, guess what? You'll see it because it's right there. He said, better than that, what if you don't get a chance to see a mirror? What if you don't get to see the reflection? So now I, I got to go further than that. I got to get it in your inward parts. Well, you won't forget it. I got to put it in your heart. What to keep you, well, you know what? You won't have the desire. When you got the writings in your heart, you don't have the desire to do it. See, all these things he said, for, it made sense for them. Okay? Let's go back and look at what we read in your cause of call. Did that help y'all kind of understand a little better? Oh, yeah. See, that's the goal. Let me tell you something. I know people struggle with how I'm going to do it. I hear it, but how is it, how is it that easy? It's not. That's why we have to sit down and dissect it for us so we get an understanding of what it is we have to do. Because until you can see it a certain type of way, you won't actually grasp it. And that's part of what we're trying to do. We're trying to see it in a way that he designed it for us to see it so we'll grasp the concept. And now we don't have to worry about going back and committing it anymore. I believe you can't live free from Kataim. You just got to know what it is. See, the thing we didn't know. We didn't think, you think, I'm looking at the booty line. Lisa ain't touching it. He said something in your law to draw you, attract you to it. 
I want you to lust after other Elohims. I want you to lust after all these things. Then you start learning how to do certain things. The different thing I want you to keep you from. Y'all got it? Let's see. What we laugh about? This is the ninth chapter book of your cause of call. What verse we at? We have verse 5. Still at verse 5. Go ahead. And to these he said, in my shama, go through the city after him and kill, not do let spare your own, nor have any pity. You know what he told him to do? When they go through that, don't let your eye. He told him to let your eye pity, because what would the eye do? Take knowledge. I can see all oh, man. Looking at him, he don't look like he want to die. He said, don't do it. Don't let your eye fool you. I want you to go with that. Come think of sometimes you'll see stuff. How that work for us? Give me a hand. Who are you gonna, who we gonna use? Hold on, I got a bishop. Bishop, what we got? Right answer check. Let's hear it. He's exactly right. Malak Shaul. What you gonna say? Abraham. Oh, talking about the lad. Not the pity of the lad. But well, he'd have looked at we were looking at the eye appearance. Well, I would have used what he said. With Shaul, for how many of you don't know what we're talking about? Shaul, when Shaul was sent in, he was the first Malacca Yasharal. He told him to go in, slay young and old, and slay every beast. And he said, and they kept the best of them. Because his eye, the knowledge he had, he looked at, I, that don't make sense to kill that one. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going to kill no baby. You know what I'm saying? I I'm not going to say that. That one, that's too good to destroy the town. So he did what we do with the eye. Y'all see what I'm saying? So he sent them in, them people not already knowing Shaul done passed. Don't, don't, don't push Shaul. Don't, don't, don't let your eye make a fool out of what you see. Now you understand a statement that was made how we walk. What you have for me, right? See why? Because see, they, he, why he would tell them that they eye, you see why it makes sense? Because they eye, just like Shaul, I will mess them up. I know what he said, but I'm thinking. To me, I can't see this could be used. See why he wanted to tell you. Now you heard that how we walk. Because these guys told, don't use your sight. Because you're going to make the wrong judgment call. I don't, want you to, I don't want you to spam and don't let your eye pity them, okay? Don't start looking to my I can't bring myself to it. So you're not walking by Amunah like I told you. Okay? Come on. That makes sense? Okay, come on. Zakan and young Anashim and maidens and little Benin. The and old men, the old men, the women, who else? And maidens and little Virgins. Benin mm -hmm. and Nashim slay, slay utterly. Oh my goodness. Can you imagine that? You talking about babies? Man, I ain't with that, man. Somebody else got to do that. He said, don't worry about it. I got somewhere for you. Mm. Because your eye, he's trying to show, listen, this is what got, listen, this is what messed up up. He's trying to construct an arm that will move by his call, by his sound. One that actually among his words. And when we start to look at trying to justify and rationalize, it's a problem. It's a problem. And these are things we want to consider. Now, he done told these guys what to do. Listen to what he want them to do. Slay utterly, but any one each on whom upon the mark not do come near. Y'all hear that? Now the ones that had the mark on their forehead don't go near them. Now, now this is something to consider. Do anybody remember why he didn't want to slay those people? Hand. Oh, I got it back down. Tim, who one of them? So the people that, it didn't bother them. They were okay with it. What do you want to do with them? Now we'll see some of us that played it, that makes come into play. How about that? See that Roman in the first chapter? See about verse 25? Let me see. That's what I want. Romans chapter 1, about 25. I got to go down further, then we'll see. All right. What we got?
Go ahead. Who changed the Amat of Elohim into the falsehood and reverenced and served the created thing beyond the one having created it. Go what you got. How many of y'all understand that? Don't understand it. That he worshiped. I appreciate you. God, that's what we want to do. If you don't understand, let's make sure you understand. So we're talking about where we start him. And reverence, we go over this way. Woo, woo, woo. Woo, woo. Who changed the truth of Allahim into falsehood and reverence and served the created thing beyond the one having created it. Bracket. How many of y'all don't understand that? Premise was set up for that. When Yahuwah told you when he appeared to you, what did he say he did? Huh? You saw no image. Only you heard a voice. Unless you did what? And did what? Like what? Like things in the Shamaim or things. Even man or beast. You see how a lot of that come into play? Why he told you that? And the fact he told you to worship and serve the creature more, you're trying to figure why. He's trying to tell you they're going to worship and serve the created thing more than the one that created it. That's why he, he said, that's why I didn't show it to you. See, people that were new, were taught the to tour, this makes sense. This don't make They said, worship and serve the creature more than the creator because they didn't pay attention. They were trying to get, he was trying to get them to look at. This is why I told, the thing we told them for, when I spoke to you, I never showed you anything. You only heard a voice. Lest you corrupted yourself. And guess what they did? They corrupted yourself. I told you what you were going to do. Whether it was man or beast, whether it was a fowl in the air, whether it was anything, he said you were going to go and you were going to start the Shakardis. You're going to start the door and the deck. Look how sissy dressed they sell at homosexual. Yeah. Don't they always decorate? You probably, you said, why you got that junk on? They're doing what they tell them to do my name. Think about it, they would say, you don't see really plain clothes, sissy. They always do some flamboyant. They're decorating it. He said, I don't want you to decorate the flesh. I want you to decorate my shim. Y'all got it? Okay. So you can kind of see how things wind up coming to play. Come on, finish up. Who is Barak to the ages. Who restored a gift for ages, forever. Amon. Come on, Amon. Because of this gave up them, Elohim, to passions of dishonor, even for females of them change the natural use into the contrary to nature. See that? Good nature. A man and a man booty hole can't create nothing. Mm -mm. Right. They can't do nothing. No, sir. Two bad mouth women, they ain't gonna do nothing. Nothing. About you. No bojana. They, they can't do nothing. They can't hurt each other. They can't do nothing. Mm -mm. They don't have nothing to do with nature. He said go against nature. That's right. They already let them know you don't win against nature. Listen. Likewise then also the males having left the natural use of the female Listen. were inflamed in the desire of them toward one another. Man, burn it. Males with males. So 15 butt naked women get to a full dread man. Mm, 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 mm. Come on, I'm hot. Come on. Males with males, the shame working out and the recompense which was fitting of the error of them in themselves receiving. Listen. And as not, they did, they did see fit. Allahim to have in their knowledge gave up them. Allahim to a depraved mind to do things not being proper, mm -hmm. being filled with all Rosha, Rosha covetousness, yeah, malice. Yeah, they being filled with all Rosha, all evil, all wickedness. Listen. Malice. Full of envy, envy, murder, murder, strife, strife, deceit, yeah. maliciousness, mm -hmm. gossips, slanderers, hateful of Elohim, Listen. insolent, arrogant, boastful, inventors of rosha things to mm -hmm. parents, to parents disobedient, foolish, untrustworthy, heartless, unmerciful, who the Sadiq decree. Of Elohim have known that those such things doing Listen. worthy of moot are not only them are practicing, but also are approving of those practicing them. See, he wants him to put a mark on the forehead of everybody that side. Everybody had a problem with it. 
Because the people, you know what? I'm being with y'all, man. That stuff don't bother me. See, when they read this, they have no idea where it's predicated from. So those people cried because they were looking at the tithing. Y'all going to get us killed. I ain't going over that food. I don't agree with that stuff. He look, but you, it's okay with you. He said, now them folks I'm going to kill. He said, I'm going to kill the people that got pledged on them. Right. Why do you think he told them to go through and mark the one that side? Right. It bothered them. Yeah. See, folks don't realize, even the book told you about Luke. Yeah. They said that thing grieved his, it That's grieved right. him every day. That's right. It grieved him. It said it grieved his dark soul behind That's that right. stuff. See, they don't know that. They're thinking, well, Luke didn't have, your mama didn't have a problem with it. That's that right. book said it grieved him every day. That's right. These folk grieved me. Yeah. Y'all be okay with me. It's okay. Let them do what they want to do. I'm all right with you. Watch them on that. I was watching a series. On, uh, I told y'all why. It was a good little series going on. And when we got in that bed, I, said, I, I cut out something done with it. I, that, that bothered me. I didn't know that. I don't, I don't watch that stuff. I don't have no pleasure in that stuff. Well, just get on, skip on, just leave it alone. It had nothing to do with the movie. Some stuff, they ain't trying to call themselves a god or compare. I said, this had nothing to do now unless you're trying to set these people up to do something. Some stuff I just don't want because I know you got another agenda. It's too many people you start to take on. You get in dough. But when you turn on television, you watch stuff, you open yourself up for stuff too. You really open your mind up to say, so you'd be surprised what you hear, how much you take on. You can hear stuff in your sleep and dream it. You be watching someone tell you, you mess around and dream it. That's how, that's how dangerous it is for everything to go in your ear. You can't take everything in your ear. Some stuff you can't get yourself. You say, no, I, I, I don't be bothered with that stuff. I can't be bothered with that. I don't have no time. It had nothing to do with the movie. What was the name of that? I don't know it was Secret and Lies or something. What did that have to do? What did them two be home had to do with the movie? What did it have to do with the movie? It had nothing to do with the series. They'll, see, this is what they do. They get you comfortable. Then, you know, let's just throw this in here right quick. Because I'm attracted. And somebody said, well, I'm too far in the series right now. I just, hey, now I just keep moving. You keep going. And, and it, they just keep inducing you little by little with little things. And before you know it, homosexual, the new normal. They just keep giving you stuff. Before you know it, you just getting this stuff. Before you know it, you out here. Now, mother dates her son. Those people need to be gunned down. Right. A mother is way, oh, oh, Jesus, I hope I pick my son. Y'all need to be killed. Who watches this foolishness? Watch this even on TV. They're the most disgusting thing in the world. But guess what? Guess what? Who will get to you? NBC, ABC, MSNBC, Fox, all will get to you? Because everybody plays your mind. Everybody want to induce you in. You know what I'm saying? That's just TV. That's how they get you. You know what Daoud said? He said, I set no wicked thing before my own. Because you're taking knowledge of it. The appearance of it. He told you to stain. You ain't going to believe it. From the appearance of Rosha. That's right. He told, why is it a stain from it? He said, a stain from the appearance of it. Because people are going to take knowledge of you with it. A lot of stuff we can't fool with. It's just such thing. I said, man, get that stuff back over. Like I said, man, get that stuff back over the same for the destruction of the Basal. So the so the Nefasha be saved in the in the last June. Yes, sir. See that man told you? But also are approving of those practicing them. So let's go back. Let's see what they're talking about. See, you don't need your cause card, you can rip this out. Cause once you're a New Testament creature, this stuff ain't important. Who do that now? Everything you go back, you read, you can see how it come to pass right now. Y'all don't, don't think that's just real art that two trains, two chemical trains that flipped over in two different, totally different places. They're real. And pouring out chemicals. No. Freak accident. All the animals and the fish dying. Y'all don't know in Kazoon, he told each one of them Malachi to pour out their, he told them to pour out their vials. Yes, sir. And one poured his out on the trees. Yes, and another one poured his out on the water. And he told you, he said a third part of it wound up dying. Okay. No train flipped over. You who is just told him to pour out the vials. He told everyone, he said, pour out your vial. And a third part of all this stuff gonna start dying. Men, why y'all think all these people dying? They pouring their vials out because they don't need you to watch that. Because you know what? You're not gonna want to go to their games. You're not gonna be worried about that. You're gonna be concerned about you dying. You're gonna be worried about the world in it. You're gonna be you need to get right. You're gonna start trying to make preservation and reservation. So I don't need you reading that. 
This Sunday you go down, and the mass choir going to blow a new one. God's still in charge. That's going to be the song. God's still in charge. So shake your booty down. That's it. Loose the scissors. Everybody gonna, I'm telling you, if people were cognizant and knew what was going on, listen, what you're trying to do would change. You'll look at things differently. You see the world ending. Okay. Let's see. Come on. What verse we left off at? Six. Come on, so I try to get them finished up. Verse six. Your cars are called 96. Chapter 9, verse 6. All right. That's five. We haven't finished. Uh, we read on the mark, not do come near. Uh, I think that was above that. Five, six. I'll go up a little bit more. Right there. Yes, oh. And then my mock dodge. I'll we'll go up a little bit more before that. A little bit before that. What do you want to do? We'll start out. And the little children. And little Benim and the Sheen slay utterly, but any any one each on whom upon the mark upon the mark not do come near. And at my mock does begin, so they began with the Zakanim who before the Mashakan, and he said to them defile the Mashakan and, and do what? And fill the courts with the slain. Go Wait, out. Go out and they went out and killed in the city. So it was that while they were killing them and was left I and was left I and I fell on my Pani and Sak out and said, Ah Yahuwah Allahim will destroy you all the remnant of Yasharal in pouring out your fury on Jerusalem. And he said to, to me, the iniquity of the Beth of Yasharal and Yehuda is great. Is very exceedingly and is full of their rights, bloodshed, and the city full of perversity. For, for they say, has forsaken Yahuwah the Arats, and not Yahuwah the Sea. What happened? Huh? Okay, the, and Yahuwah does see. Uh huh. And also, as for me, neither will spare my own, nor will I have pity their deeds on their own head. That's fine. Now, now, no doubt, this had to be something that could be tangible, physical, that they could see it. What do you think about a man you see to take a sword, an axe, and chop a baby up? What would y'all think? Good person? A man going to take a woman and just chop her up. What does he regard? What does he care about women? What does he care about little babies? You take teenagers, middle school, elementary, and just chop them up. What do you think about them? How do you think he regard them? How do you look at them? Men. What about old people? Old women, old men, and chop them up. What do you think he regard them? You who had them to do that, so the people that are being slain, the people watching it, what you think they had to think about those six men? These guys are crazy. These guys are just killing people. They're killing babies. They're killing women. They're killing Bethula, virgins. They're killing, they're just killing people. And they're not regarding any of these people. And you who let them know why? Because I'm not going to regard them. So you understand that? That the invisible things of Elohim were clearly being seen. I'm not going to regard you and your children. I'm not going to regard you old women and you old men. I'm not going to regard the teenagers or the young people. He said, I'm going to slay them all because the iniquity of these people are so great in Yasharal and Yehuda. Now, this set a, a precedence up for us, actually. And you guys know it. Can you figure it out? Oh, can I? Tell me. Come back to the answer. 
He said, go let me answer. I'm going to get that check, though. True, you hooded, nigga. And <laughs> I'm trying to get you the 40 check, nigga. <laughs> but no, nah, he's good. So let's look at this. Let's look at um, Cuff, Olive Cuff, fourth chapter. We'll do one, verse one, said it work. That's your first chat today, ain't it? And that's your first one. <laughs> All right, listen, let's say this is uh, this is Olive first, they'll call it first Peter Cough. Four and one. Listen. We'll try to run through this. Mashiach, therefore, having suffered in Basar. Also, you, the same mind, arm yourself with, because the one having suffered in the basar is done with kata. See that? Now you're talking about how he suffered. And his suffering, sometimes suffering means allow. So we look at the hand, cough, the open. That's what it means to allow. If I'm going to give you something, you say, okay, then you allow me to do that. So allow. So here we're talking about him suffering, allowing, or we're talking about him suffering, resisting. Because he's talking about stop doing it. And this is where he look at the purpose of him coming. See, him suffering in the flesh has actually brought an end to Kataim. Because now it's giving us the knowledge. And what we lacked was the knowledge. We lacked the knowledge of not being able to commit Katah. Because think about it, isn't it? If this sin, ain't no spirit, nothing, nothing from Molly gonna shoot down here and tackle me and put me on the ground and keep me from touching it. It's the knowledge. It's the pure knowledge of Elohim to know not to touch, not to handle, not to consume. It's the knowledge. No spirit. No, he's not going, oh, I thank my God for the angel wrapping with me and keeping me from drinking. No, it's not. That can of open and that bottle open just as easy for you as it did when you was a son of It's the knowledge. See what I'm saying? They want to put it on some kind. He don't have no time handle about running around trying to tackle you to keep. Man, they be tired to death. I'm trying to tackle you and hold you down. And you nigga, you are overcoming with your sinful spirit. Every time be wrestling you all up. That's just being honest. Because the will, the sin is so great. They be stressed out. Man, they be so tired. All little white robe, little clothes tore up and nasty in the mud, full of those niggas. Because your will so so, you know what I'm saying? We so set, hard pressed. So you had to put some on our inward parts. You had to make sure we had a knowledge of that will constrain and constrict us that you will have a desire to live. What you think people are doing? You see me with an axe, I'm finna chop you up. What you thinking? Oh, I'm ready to die, nigga. Kill me. You thinking, I don't want to die. You thinking, whatever you can do to get out of this. That's what he, so the people that were sitting there who did, what you think they looking at? Did, you think they would get, they had a will say, soon as this over, I'm finna get crunk. I'm finna get back in them streets. Them folks looking, they thinking all of him. Yeah, sure, honey. And it, there's more confirmation not to go. Because surely he got some more people prepared to come and kill us later if we should turn from our city. What you think the whole purpose of it for? It was written for our learning. To realize why it's conducive or why it's a necessary, of a necessity for to keep a lifestyle. Because it man always got somebody he got stored up for. He keep a serial killer. He keep a mad murderer. He keeps somebody that texts and don't look up. They, I'm talking about nine times finish this whole paragraph. I'm pissed. And they headlong coming for you. Yeah, who got somebody for you now? That's what, think about the people who didn't. You think, listen, they say, well, they were already good. Guess what? That confirmed to stay good. You think they didn't do like some of us? I was just in the turn. I thought about doing something else. I started saying, listen, man, it ain't my job to keep nobody left right. Really, that's on them. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna try to judge nobody. I ain't gonna stop them stop being where I'm upset with folks when they doing what they do. They look at that. No, stay upset with them. Don't give in to them. That came to confirm them to let them know. Don't turn from what you're doing now. Y'all understand that? Okay. Let's see where they go. Come on. So we're talking about then sin and how no longer, so no longer men desire to. Which way we go from here? Sin. So as no longer unashamed desires, will. We talk about desire is will, right? So that's what he got to do. He changed the will. But listen to that desire, that's will, but to the will of Elohim. That's all we talk about. Remember, we talk about will was desire. That's all he did, just came and changed the will. Hello? That's all he did, change the will. That's what the information did. It came and gave us a different will. 
Now you turn on to the will of Allahim versus the will of the flesh. If you fornicate, if you drink, if you lie, if you cheat, if you're doing all these things he's told not to do, it's because of the will. Man, I don't be want to be lying. That's not true. That's the will. That's why you do it. So, but we had to understand it. That simplicity, it really is more simple than what we're thinking. You're only doing it because that's the will. So what are you doing? I'm going to just get rid of your will? No, you just need the will of Elohim. When he talked about, for this is, see that? Even your kudah, that you should abstain from zanu. And that every one of you should know. How would I know how unless I've been taught? How to possess his body in Kudash and not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gui, the other nation, who knew not. So what's the difference between me and them? Knowledge. Knowledge. <laughs> See, it ain't called they too dumb, they too stupid, they Christian. It's knowledge. They don't have the knowledge. <clears throat> When you have the not the not it changes the behavior. Typically, when people go to prison, go to jail, you know the first thing that's what they try to give them education. You know, they try to tell them they need to be educated. When you educate a man, you'll give him something he can do instead of him going and committing crime. They don't even believe that their education changes a man's behavior. Why do they don't believe that the education not all he would change a man or woman's behavior? Right. <sighs> Come on, finish this up. The remaining in the Basar to Kai time. So, the remaining time he got, he won't work to try to fulfill the flesh. Come on. It's sufficient for the past time, the desire. See, back then it was good. At one time it was good for the flesh. Come on, the stuff we were doing was, it became a point that it wasn't conducive to what we were trying to do. When we were doing it, it was, at the time it was good for the time, wasn't it? Come on, it was good for the time. But then when the time changed, we can't do that. They're like in Mizraim, what we've done. It was good for the time. But when the time changed, he said, you should no longer do as you did in Mizraim. So for the time, it was sufficient. Y'all got it. Come on. The desire of the Gawin to have carried out, having halak in sensuality, lust, drunkenness, orgies, Oh, Correct. Good. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Man, they had them back then. Mm. Craziness. I said orgies. I ain't heard that in so long. Come on. Carousing and abominable idolatries. Come on. With respect to this, they think it strange. Whoa. Then what happened? Not running with them of you yeah. into the same. Of debauchery overflow, speaking Rosha of you, mm. who will That's give. That's the same thing they did with Yahushua. That's right. They thought it was strange. He wasn't doing what he was doing. Asked, so why, why walk not your, your Talmudin as the rest of us do? They thought it was strange he didn't run to the same excess of ride. And get what they wound up doing. They were speaking Rosha of him, speaking evil of him, like they do with you. Come on. Mm -hmm. Who will give account to him who ready is to shafit the kai and the moot. See that? He gonna, he gonna judge the living and the moot, the dead. So he said, listen, they gonna give an account. That's what we consider. They had to give an account. Listen. To this end, indeed, even to the moot, the tube news was proclaimed so that they might be shafit, indeed, according to Anashim mm -hmm. in the Basar, they might kai However, according to Allahim in the Ruach, come on. Of all, now the end has drawn near. Mm -mm, Y'all hear what happened? The end and draw near. This gonna throw us. Listen. Be clear-minded, therefore, and sober, uh -huh. for the purpose of Palal, above all things, among yourselves, a hob fervent, having because a hob covers over. A multitude of Kataim. And we understood that by Yahushua. He told us that would have perfectly maintained how Allahim so a heart belong. Otherwise, we wouldn't have never understood this. How would it cover? He told you a heart would cover a multitude of them. All of us being covered because of a heart. Why you start out telling us Allahim so a heart build rights that he gave? Because he needed you to understand what a heart. I'm telling you to do something, you're going to do it based, you're gonna do it based off your knowledge of it. Or it's proven. See what I'm saying? He proved it. 
that Ahab actually did it. He said, and I want you to have that firmly among one another. Yeah, we should be firmly Ahab among one another. Come on. Hospitable to one another mm -hmm. without complaint. Mm -mm. Each as have received a barak to each other, them serving as two stewards mm -hmm. of the manifold con of Elohim. Okay. If anyone speaks as Dabarim of Elohim. Speak the words of Elohim. If you speak, speak the words of Elohim. What happened? If anyone serves as of strength with supplies, Elohim, mm -hmm. so that in all things may be kabooed. See that? Same thing that if any man speak, let him speak. There, the King James Version said, as the oracles, which would mean divine inspired oracles, refer to other stuff they use as the Greek writing. But when you look at that, and the reason why that would be important, because he was a constant upon when people speaking, say only what he said. He told Balaam the same thing. You go with him, but you say what words I put in your mouth. So, so it's showing you, I never change. He never had a time. He said, listen, like these lying folk call themselves apostles. God, let me say what I want to say. He said, that's a lie. I don't. I want you to speak what I tell you to say. I only say what I told you to say. Y'all got it? And now he told any man speak. He ought to be speaking what the, what did the boss say. There would be no contradictions. The problem become now, everybody start adding and putting, like they said, putting your own flavor, your own sauce on it. Come on. Allahim through Yahushua HaMashiach, to whom be the kabood and the power to the ages, just Amon. Come on. Yet he die, not be surprised at the among, at thee among you, fire for a trial to you taking place as if a strange thing to you were happening. That's why y'all at now when stuff come up and happen, you think it's strange when certain things happen against you concerning your fiery trial, but they're working to prove you out. He told you, I chose you to the furnace of affliction. See, people don't realize that just like with gold, to get it to its purest point, you gotta be able to heat it to a certain level beyond what your cooking or your stove does because you're trying to get it to a purest point. So why would I be going through all the things I'm going through? Because it would be considered at my fiery trials to try to get me to perfection. And then I look and I want to faint because I don't understand why. It don't make no sense. I ain't doing nothing. It ain't you doing nothing. I'm trying to get you to a proof point. Your Palal is this. I want to be saved. How many of y'all desire I want to be saved? Palal, I want to be saved. I want to be right. I want to be forgiven everything I've done. Well, then I need to purify. But, but let me ask you a question. Why, why am I going through so much when I'm trying to be right? I don't know, stupid. I couldn't tell you, diamond. And then we, why we be telling this? Because a human, being human, is natural for you to question, to doubt, to wonder why. But now he telling you, don't think it's strange. Because I chose you to the furnace of affliction. I'm purifying you. What you asked me I'm doing, and now you say, can I just stop it? <laughs> I go, okay, I can't win in. I won't be saved. Okay, we start back. Can why am I going through all this trouble? Can you just stop all these troubles and all this stuff from coming against me? It look like every time I look around, some at me, some picking at me, some trying me, some talking about trying you like I'm trying to get you to perfection. And I want to be saved without any trying. Gold want to be purified in 24 care, but they don't want to be tested. That's only get you to perfection. I got to test you. I got to put y'all, we need to know because y'all, we're quick to quit, to quit. We're quick to quit. We're quick to complain. We're quick to change what we're after. Do you want to be saved? Then the book said, let patience have a perfect work. Let him do it have a perfect, let him work. Do what you're supposed to do. He, he, it's got to be working for you. If you just, that's the thing. This, see, you don't realize this me. This ain't, when I'm saying, uh, this include me, okay? We got to stop thinking, okay, he know what he's doing, but then I need to kind of help it because he don't know what he's doing now. You ain't said it, but you are saying it. How he don't know? How he don't know I'm hurt? How he don't know? How he don't know my knee hurt? When he the one made the knee? How he don't know none of this stuff? He showed it when, when um, I forgot they was sitting behind uh, Nathan. Nathan was sitting behind the tree. He said, "I knew that." He said, well, "You were sitting behind it." He said, "How you know? I already know it. You're not going through that. He don't know. It, it'll make you feel like when you're going through." Can you just talk to him for me? Because I'm going through. He already know it. And you're going through for a reason. Because I need to try you. You asked me to save you. 
You say, I won't be saved. I don't want to die, I want to burn. Okay, well, I got to do it for Satan. Before I go to the hospital, been gunshot. I don't want to die, save my life. I got no surgery. I don't want no surgery now. I can't, I can't, I don't, don't let me die. Well, I got to move it. I don't want, mm -mm, mm -mm. I'm scared of surgery. Mm -mm. Anything but that, you're going to die. I don't want to die. You got to do surgery. I don't want surgery because people die in surgery. He said, I can't win. I can't win with you. You want to be saved, but you don't want to go through nothing. You don't want to be patient. You don't want to let patience have a work. You don't want me to purify you, and you want to be right. He said, how, how are we going to do that? I'm so confused. How are they going to work? You know what? I know he wasn't going to save me. I know he wasn't going to save me. I just, I just go, go through it. And he's like, are, you, are we retarded? Are we retarded? Because one thing, we want salvation without any replications or no, I mean, no, it's, it's because of what we go through for me. It makes you don't want to, it's just some stuff. I, I'm being with y'all, it ain't happening, I ain't doing it. I don't, I don't want to do that. I just don't want to do that. I don't been through too much. I don't want to do it. And it's because of everything I've gone through. It's because of the suffering. It's because of not knowing when. It's because of the scrambling of the mind. It just makes you, I don't want to do it. I don't want to be there. I don't want to go through that no more. But had it been any other way, I'll loosely go and just go ahead and do it. Because really, I mean, what's going to happen? Y'all you know what I'm saying? It takes your suffering. It takes him taking you through and your perseverance to make you look at, I want to go back. You know what? Another end, he told them, when he brought my Mizra in, y'all remember what he told him he wanted them to do? Who know? What is it? Okay. Go back. <laughs> Soon they walked out, he took them straight to Jerusalem. <laughs> what he did? <laughs> well, you done went a whole long way. Hey, man, come on, let go back. You like, nigga, you out your mind. <laughs> now, nah, Father, can't, you see the purpose of it? What all they had to go? So, you, you finna go back across the Red Sea. Cause he ain't opening it up. You finna, they thinking. You yeah, that wall, you like. No. Think about it though. Because physically, there has to be obstacle things to make you consider. All the war, all the fighting to get to Jerusalem. I ain't trying to go back there. I'm just not trying to go back. But when it's like, it ain't nothing to do that to go back. So he put them through these things so they could physically look at, this is a lot. A lot of people died to get us him. They why people die in droves. Not no, I know last week somebody died, then some months later, these folk dying 24,000, 10,000, 3,000. You thinking, and you make it, you say, man, I can't afford to go back now. I can't go back. And a lot of times you rationalize trying to fight and look at make things easier. Easier is why we commit a sin. It wasn't hard for me to commit a sin, it was easy. So now you make it hard press on me, like, no, nah, you weigh it all, you say, no, nah, I, ain't, I ain't gonna be able to do it. Because knowledge. Because we read now, knowledge. Y'all got it? Come on, finish this up. But as you have shared in the of Mashiach sufferings, rejoice so that also in the kazoon of the kabood of him, you may See rejoice that? exalting. See, like now, when you resist, and some of them done lost relations. I got people who done lost marriages and other stuff. Yeah. This, this is part of his suffering. See, all his suffering was for us. Now you got to be a partaker, so you still put some responsibility. We don't have that, that stuff they gave a Christian. You ain't got to do nothing. Jesus did it all. Then why are you suffering? Because you partaker of his suffering. But guess what else happened now when he got up? He got his kaboo. He don't suffer no more, does it? He ain't bleeding out, crying, hollering Jesus. <laughs> Guess what he's saying? So when this thing come back to reveal, you also going to share in that part too. If a husband and wife struggling, the wife don't struggle because the husband's str cause the, cause the husband struggling. She'll part, so if the husband get money, they become, well, number you though, because it's going to work that. Still suffering, I ain't going to win. Let's use another time. We'll find something else. But say if that wasn't the case, you'll be part of, the benefit of him coming out, just like you part of the suffering while he was in. Well, that's the same thing with Yahuwah, with Yahushua. We're suffering now because we partake of his affliction, only so you can also share his kaboom when he returned back. Y'all got it? Okay, let's see what he told him. If you are insulted in the Shem of Mashiach, you are Barak. 
See because that? of the Kabul See and that? of Allahim Ruach. See, because they insulted him. They insulted him. So he's saying the same thing. If you insult on him, but then you're also looking at what's going to be revealed when he come back. The Kazoom. Come on. Of Allahim Ruach upon you rest on indeed their part. He is mm -hmm. blasphemed on, however, your part. He is kabooed, not for any of you let, su let suffer as a murderer or a thief. Or so he's eat. talking about when you, see, this is something, you know, when you suffer because people criticize you for doing his will, he said, on that end, that's kabooed to him. That's how the author was kabooed through Yahushua. People think he was kabooed because he fed 5,000 men and women, not including the women and children, because uh, he opened the blind eyes, because he did uh, some other thing that people call miracles. But he said he actually got his kaboo at the fact that that man suffered. The fact that that man was able to sit here and take it, and he didn't let it penetrate through him to where it caused him to fail the feet. And you, what you're looking at, see, the Lord give me my house. He give me my new house. I'm going to make sure he get all his glory, too. He said, you know how I many folk got houses? I need somebody, I need to be kaboo when you lose your house. I need people looking and saying, what's wrong with that? That joker that lost his house. And he's still trying to serve. That's how he got a kaboo. Look at Yahushua. He's been, all these things happen. He said he got a kaboo from his suffering. But how we think is, he get a kaboo, I get a new car, or when I drive it, I'm going to drive it in Jesus' name. I'm going to put the tag on the front of in Jesus' name car. So the father, think about it. Chris, we thought, who think about him getting something from your suffering? But if suffering don't do anything, how did you get the opportunity for salvation? Through suffering. So now you can see how things start to work for you when you have an understanding. But the way we saw things, he only got kaboo when we got things, and we're gonna write his name on it so people know who gave it to us. We're gonna know who gave it. He said, let me let them see you suffering. Just like I right, look at it with uh Cain. He put a mark on his forehead. So everybody knew who he was suffering for. And he put a tour, a law, that nobody would to kill him either. Because I got him suffering. Nobody was to lay a hand on him. Why didn't folk know about him before that? The second son of Adon, that should have got him some glory, shouldn't it? You the third oldest person on the planet. Bro, I got to give you a part. I got to give you a prop, bro. You older than all of us. He got in Kabo. He got Kabo. him. Everybody recognized that Allahim had him suffering. And he put a mark on him man, that nobody was to touch him in his suffering. Okay. Don't worry about it. Go ahead. As a murderer or as a thief. He said, don't suffer like that. Come on. Or Rosha or as a troublesome meddler. Yeah. If, however, as a Mashiach follower of Mashiach not let him be ashamed. See that? If you follow the anointed one, he said, don't be ashamed. See, we wind up being ashamed of our suffering. That's what we more ashamed of our suffering versus he look at, when you do this right here, you ought to be ashamed if you was a murderer, if you were doing something rosha. He said, a Mashiach rest upon you when you're doing what he told you. Come on. Let him kaboot, however, Allahim in the Shem, this for it is the time for to have begun uh -oh. the mashpa. Y'all hear that? It's the time now for the mashpa. What the world going on? What happened? From the Beth of Allahim. From the Beth of Allahim. If now, first, from us, what, happened? what will be the outcome of those disobeying the Allahim, the of Allahim tube news? Now, what you need to pay attention to, this is the same thing that happened in your cause call. That's right. He told him again. That's what Mosh Pot started. That's right. That's why Cuff told it to him. That's right. He said, the time that come, the judgment must begin with us. So see, for those that know the Torah, we know exactly what he's talking about. I'm going to slay every one of them. Those that don't sigh. Those that don't have a problem with these people. That's why he's taking people down to him. Because he told them where to start at. He said, begin at my Mosh Khan. Start at my house. So when Cuff told him this, the Efo had no idea what he was talking about. See, people that knew the tour knew exactly what he was talking about. He going through now with the ball. You know what he's trying yep. to do? Put a mark on every one of these people. Yes, sir. Mark these people. Those that sigh. Those that tremble at his ball. 
He's looking at these people. This is important now to start looking at. That's why you got to take us down. That's why people got to fall away. That's why people got to die. Why you got to take people out? Because this way it's going to start at. Now, this is what you got to ask yourself. What you think the end going to be for the rest of these people that don't obey? How about this? That's why he told you. Chop them into pieces. Kill them. Kill their babies. Kill mamas. Kill daddies. Kill old people and young people. Kill them all. That's what the end going to be. If that started with us, what you think will happen to the rest of these people? Don't worry about it. That's too. Appreciate it,